Hello and welcome back to another episode of the longest game of all time, now going into the 50s. Uh, starting at winter 1950, this episode is going to go through to winter 1960, and I'm here once again with Ezio. Hi Ezio. Hello, hello. Are you ready for some, well, some more analysis now that we're almost more than halfway through this game? <laughs> Analysis is a strong word to describe what I feel we do, but yes. <laughs> yep. Uh, so when we left off, these were our power rankings. Russia at the top, uh, Germany second, Italy third, and I believe this gap between Italy and Austria was uh, purposeful. Austria all the way down there in last, despite the fact they just managed to take Constantinople, which is not something that anyone else has managed to do in a very long time. Um, it's been Russian for... Decades. Generations. Yep. Uh, and when we left off, I believe the power structure was such that um, the Austrian and the Italian were aligned against the German and the Russian, although the German had been fighting the Russian just before. So there's a little bit of, of questioning on that and whether that's uh, that's actually happening or not. I guess we'll see going forward. Um, so, shall we just jump right into Spring 1951 here? Let's do it. Let's go. And as always, I'm going to give myself time to think by immediately asking Ezio what he thinks of this face. <laughs> Is there anything that stands out to you? I mean, it looks like we have pretty clear confirmation that Russia and Germany are now actually working together. There's, there's no animosity left. Um, like we see that because <laughs> Germany made no moves against Russia and Russia pulled out. Um, it looks like Austria even joined on board for whatever reason. The entire map just got pasted at Italy because Austria pulled out of Bohemia and Galicia and Khan and is now looking to take Venice. And if Germany is going to support that, it's going to happen. Huh. So... I don't know what Italy did, what Italy said. Maybe it's the new Italian player, and everyone knows that player is an asshole, and no one wants to work with them. I'm not. I don't know exactly what's going on, but this is this is a rough turn for the Italian. This is really odd. I mean, as Austria in this position, it seems a little questionable because if uh, if Russia's not attacking Germany, who are they attacking here? There's no way they're just going to wait there for you to attack the Italian, surely. Not for the amount of time it would take for you to actually take anything significant. Um, I mean, you would think that in a normal game, but, like, who knows, man? Maybe this... Maybe they are going to let us sit here and wait forever. This is... I mean, yeah, it's true. The Russian has been a very patient player so far. Um, and it's just disappointing to see the Austrian giving up Constantinople immediately. After yeah. managing to take it for the first time in forever. Yeah, there's like... <sighs> it's tough for Austria to make any progress, though, against Russia. Right, because that's an army in Constantinople, Russia can use Ankh, Armenia, to support Smyrna. And then, even with the Gene Eastern Med, that's not, that's not going to make any progress. Um, it would have this turn, because Russia decided to block the Lepanto again. Um, probably pretty wisely, because most people aren't going to go for Smyrna, but, like, once it's in Syria, Smyrna and Ankara, you're even more locked in, right? No progress to be made against Russia for a long time. And then Romania can be held, of course. Like, if that's a fleet in Khan, it's a whole other world, right? Because you can get into Black Sea, and then you can make, you can start taking all of those centers. But as is, he's like, yeah, I'm probably not going to get anything from here, and looks like I'm going to get Venice this way, so let's do it. Yeah, and I mean... Well, if Italy does get attacked by everyone here, at least Austria is probably going to leap up a space on our power ranking. <laughs> um, well, depending yeah, on whether they get attacked. Yeah, I mean, Marseille is guaranteed lost, right? Yep. There's just nothing that can be done, and now... Yeah, I don't know. This is... Italy is probably still fine. Like... <laughs> I don't know. Is Italy going to get eliminated? No, right? Italy's in Iberia now, plus has the Italian peninsula, and there's, like, a fleet in Greece as the only hostile fleet, really, that they have to worry about. So, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the Spain-Portugal 
just having those and fleets around them is so useful for for just keeping a, a strong force. Um, there's no way Italy's losing them anytime soon, probably. Uh, especially since the main force of this German attack is just armies, um, which can't take Spain and Portugal very easily. Uh, yeah, I mean there are a couple fleets nearby. It's just I don't know. I. It's tough to take Iberia for a while, and there's going to be enough fleets that I don't think you can literally ever break Iberia. Um, I think you have to break the Italian homeland first. Which, to be fair, does seem quite likely to happen with the only... So the only defensive units, in the north at least, are Piedmont and Venice, and with Marseille there, Piedmont can be cut while Austria takes Venice. Uh, yeah. I mean, then you have a stalemate line at, like, Rome and Apulia and Ionian, right? They need to have yeah. another fleet in Adriatic. Yes. Um, so, it's so like... well, you've got fleets, mana, fleet Greece, right? Which can push forward. Um... They, yeah, yeah, but so that's why you have fleet Ionian, to mess with fleet, to stop fleet Greece. And Russia has shown zero inclination to push fleet Smyrna out. Hmm. I, I mean, in Russia's position, I would probably put Smyrna in Aegean, at least. But then I don't know whether Austria would cooperate uh, in pushing their Austrian fleet out into Ionian in that case. I mean, they might not even do anything. They might just hold to say, hey, you're in Aegean. I don't want to let you take my dots. No. Back. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, yeah, and so we haven't really mentioned this uh, This. German shuffle of units in their homeland, uh, pushing Berlin through to Kiel. In reality, that doesn't actually, like, stop the German from being able to immediately maneuver the other direction. In fact, the fact that Munich went to Berlin rather than, say, Burgundy, means it's still in the position where it can go pretty anti-Russian, with Baltic, Prussia, Cilicia. Uh, but certainly moving to Kiel indicates that it's probably going to Holland or Heligolombite. Um, yeah, this strikes me as a more defensive move set though, because Russia was in Silesia and Warsaw still. Yeah. That and makes sense. If Russia and Austria could work it out, then Germany could see a bunch of anti German units on their front. Yeah. That makes sense. Um I mean clearly Italy knew that they'd annoyed people here. They did pull everything back towards their homeland, which mm -hmm. did I mean doesn't save them for very long, but it does, uh... It's gonna keep them around. Make them slightly more resilient, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Iberia's gonna take a couple of years to crack, and this game, things can change in a couple of years, so... I think it's very important they made them... They made their way back to Iberia. Yep. Okay, uh, anything more to talk about here, or shall we move ahead to the fall? Let's do it. Let's go to the fall. Okay. And... So much for defending Iberia. Well, uh, they do not defend Iberia at all, which is interesting. They get well, into Portugal. They do go oh, into they... Portugal, um, but they could have held they Spain. Don't cover yeah. Spain. They don't. They didn't try to cover Spain. That's weird. Like they got into Adriatic. They were clearly expecting. They were more worried about losing their homeland than losing Iberia. Seems Austria was, way. yeah, Austria was, wait, but, I don't understand Austria's, oh, I see, so Austria self-bounced in Trieste and let Russia pop the Austrian army in Bulgaria to get another fleet build in Trieste. On the condition that they kept Constantinople so that they get that build, gotcha, um, and this is probably why Germany didn't bother cutting Piedmont, they just went for Spain. Um, yeah, and so as Italy here, it seems pretty... Okay. Oh. So, they do this because there's going to be another fleet from the Austrian, and they were probably worried about the Russian fleet from Smyrna getting into Eastern Med, and so they knew that they needed three fleets. They need Tunis to support whole Ionian and Adriatic to just occupy space. And if they try to hold Spain, that stalls out for even longer. It just seems, yeah. I mean, I guess a little bit. But now, you're, what are you disbanding? They have to Probably disband too. I received Piedmont. 
or Mid Atlantic Piedmont, Portugal. Excuse me. Yeah. Right, but that's just we talked about Portugal last time. Yeah, that just feels painful to disband off of that front. I mean, if you disband Piedmont, you lose Venice, right? No, you don't lose yeah. Venice. You 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 get a little bit of time. Um, I mean, you have the spring, but then you're going to lose it in the fall. Yeah. Right, I'm assuming they pull Trieste into Albania with support, and then they get an army into Trieste from Budapest, say. Then, if you don't have Piedmont, then they attack Venice Strength 2 and cut Adriatic Sea. Yep. So. Oof. It seems really difficult, like... But at the same time, Piedmont's not doing anything, because if Germany ever wants to, they can just cut it with Marseille. This is true. So maybe but your like... best bet is trying to get Germany on side here, right? Just disband the units on his front? Um, yeah, just say, hey, I'll stop Austria from taking anything from me. You can have Iberia. Go play with Russia. I mean, especially considering uh, London to North Sea here, there is some potential that Germany might go anti-Russia. Um, yeah, Liverpool to Edinburgh. Clearly, maybe, I guess this was Italy just saying, look, man, you can have all of those things, but let's let's keep me alive. You can have it. <laughs> all right, I guess. I mean, trying to hold both sides clearly wasn't going to work, so I think this is a fine choice. Right. It's, it's struck me as odd at the, at the front, but I think this is... It's probably fine. So, actually, there are quite a few. Uh, obviously, Germany hasn't done anything uh, specifically anti-Russian, but a well, lot I mean, of the Munich things they, they did do, like Munich, Silesia, are kind of anti-Russian without being all out. Um, Kiel going yeah. to Heligoland Bight instead of Holland is also... Uh, right? That's also anti-Russian. And, again, London to North Sea. I mean, it looks to me like Germany's clearly going to go after Russia next turn. Like, I don't know, this to me seems very anti-Russian. Yeah, they have two builds, right, too, so they yes. can go Berlin, Munich. Um, well, do you and put a fleet in Berlin here? I suppose, actually, we should just move ahead to Winter and see whether they do. Or, um... Maybe, I kind of, I would... Russia's only got two fleets in the north, and you've got two fleets plus English Channel. Yeah. I would, I would not build a fleet. I'd say we're fine. Let's just get all the armies in the world. You just want to and get then... more pressure on Prussia area. Yeah, I want to get into Prussia. I would probably go after Galicia as well. I go into Prussia, into Galicia, and backfill Silesia, and then... Yep. Just, so... just start smashing. That points out how how much the the um like the dynamic is changing constantly now. <laughs> we had this uh, three powers against Russia not long ago, and then suddenly we had Germany flip, and then we had Austria flip, and now we're having Germany flip back. <laughs> Public press is a hell of a drug. <laughs> Absolutely, especially one this competitive. Um, so shall we have a look at the builds? Who else is getting a build here? Just Austria. I think it's just going to be Fleet Trieste, and Italy's disbanding, and Germany's going plus two, so... Yep. Okay, well... Let's see you. Let's find out. This is winter 1951. Uh, Alright, well, Germany wants Scandinavia. Germany puts down Fleet Berlin, Italy takes off Mid-Atlantic Ocean and Portugal. So, very much saying, okay, Germany, I'm done fighting you. I'm just going to protect my homeland now. Yeah, and from a big strategic perspective, right... If Germany can take Norway, Sweden, Denmark, St. Petersburg, and Portugal, that puts Germany at, I believe, 17? Yeah, this, but it also means he has nothing over the line, which is... Has nothing over the line, which is not ideal, but that's a pretty clear path to 17. It is? That I don't think Russia can really fight. And if he can get himself into Warsaw or Moscow in the process, then that's it. That's lights out. Right? Germany's position right now, after Italy disbanded all of these units, means he's he's alone in the West. Yep. Right. I mean, I know we're not doing power rankings here, but would you say this puts Germany above Russia at this point, then? After getting all of these Italian units gone from the west and taking all of these all of the Iberia, Germany is is dominant number one. Clearly, yeah. There's like 
Yeah, I think he's still a long way from a solo, and like Rush's position is better purely from a solo perspective because he's got things on both sides of the line, but it's so hard for Russia to transform that into a solo, as in get enough centers to do it. Germany has a clear route to 17 and then just needs someone to trip up and let him across the line. Uh, yeah, the... let anyone make a mistake at any point, and he gets there. Like, it's not even trivial because there are so many armies in the Balkans, right? Army Armenia, Army Bulgaria, Romania, Serbia, Albania, none of these are units you want to protect against the German solo going after Warsaw and Moscow, mm. right? They're relatively close, and... If Austria and Russia get there, then it's probably okay, right? They can probably stop the solo. But if they just happen to do a slight bit of overcommit to that side, then Germany might be able to pounce into Tyrolia. And if Italy doesn't have Western Med bottled up because Austria is trying to knock out Italy for a turn too long, then that can end the game as well. So this is... It looks pretty safe, right? I don't think Germany is likely to solo, but Germany can just lock down the stalemate line again and get to the position we saw France was in in, like, whatever, 1912. Yeah, and right. probably a slightly better position than France was in, because I think France was missing, like, Berlin, Munich. Was that right? So they, they certainly had less than this. Um... Yeah, the, the counterpoint is that when France pulled back from the stalemate line, they lost random centers they didn't really care about. Whereas if Germany pulls back from the stalemate line, Germany will lose their home centers. Yes. So. Which is important. Worse, right? But. Whatever. It just it, This is a really, really good position for Germany now. Alright. I, I would honestly not be surprised to see the rest of the map just start attacking Germany immediately. I mean, Give also, Germany has to be a fan of that fleet build in the south, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, Fleet yeah. Trieste ain't doing, ain't doing jack. It's gonna make yeah. it much harder for the uh, for the Eastern powers to prevent a German solo if he can get there. But uh, let's see whether he can. Let's just go ahead to the spring of nineteen fifty two. I mean, we know he doesn't immediately solo, <laughs> but we'll see we what do, he can do with this. How close do they get? Mm. All right. So yeah, it starts off with a pretty rough misguess from Germany, um, misguessing Norwegian instead of Skagerrak. Right, Germany would much rather have the North Sea end up in Skagerrak and not bounce, because then Germany has English Channel in the North Sea to backfill, and Sweden, I believe, would be guaranteed lost in that universe. Yeah. Probably, Probably. yes. Uh, especially with Baltic in, in Baltic, and the fact that Norwegian would... Well, actually, you don't really care about Norwegian as Germany, do you? Um... Nope, not with the army in Edinburgh. So, exactly. Yeah, Sweden would have been a guaranteed capture. But we don't see that. That's fine. Uh, but what elsewhere, is... he does make a significant amount of progress. He gets into Prussia uncontested, Cilicia uncontested, Baltic uncontested, gets into Denmark. Um, he's leaving Portugal Italian, which makes sense. It holds back this uh, Austria Russia alliance. Presumably, was part of the deal about the Italian disbanding all their centers. Probably. All their units. Uh, yes. And uh, we do see that um, Russian unit finally coming out of Smyrna, uh, moving into Aegean down here. <laughs> I wonder how happy the Austrian is about that. Um, I mean, Rus wait, it, it's weird we see these swaps, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Why is the Russia, Russian in Budapest? <laughs> yeah, and why is it? Yeah, I don't know what they're doing here. Uh, I don't really understand it at all. Um, it's possible they were planning on getting Austria even more fleets, right? It's possible their plan was, okay, I'm going to go minus one this turn, I'm going to pop an army, and I'm going to take it back next year, and I'm going to build another fleet, hmm. right? And we're just going to do this very slowly. I think it would make more sense to just, like, pop an army with strength two, right? Romania plus Bulgaria pops Serbia and then backs back out or something, right? Yeah. But... Hmm. I have no idea, man. Yeah, I, I don't am. see how, how Romania being in Budapest helps that. <laughs> right? I, dude, I don't know. I have absolutely no clue. Like, it, it, this clearly was all arranged, right? I'm just, it has to be all arranged, but why and what is happening? 
Yeah. I don't, yeah. Good. Very Pulling... confusing. Pulling Greece up to Albania is just odd. Uh, I mean, I assume they're trying to force Adriatic... Oh, it's definitely an attempt to force Adriatic, right? Because you get into position to tap Ionian uh, with the Russian fleet there as well. Um, yeah. No, but... Austria has guesses. Or, excuse me. Yeah, Austria and Russia have guesses to take these Italian centers. Or yeah. these Italian fleet positions. So the Italian made the correct response here to go up to Apulia. It gives them the option of support holding Ionian or Adriatic. Uh, but they still have to guess correctly because Austria and Russia have two on both. They get to choose which yeah. one's support with Albania. I'm not entirely sure about that. Because if Italy had instead left Apulia vacant, if Austria takes Adriatic with their fleet, then is Italy fine? Because the fleet doesn't get popped, right? I think the downside there is that Austria then gets to build another fleet, right? I mean, Maybe Austria they just want anyways. to pin the, uh, the fleet in Trieste. But the fleet's not pinned in Trieste. <laughs> I mean, it, it is if they enter uh, Apulia support Adriatic. Well, no, it, it, it isn't because I suppose they can slide it down to Albania. Um, right? But, but like, <laughs> with, okay, with Austria back sliding Greece up, it's going to be significantly more annoying, right? Mm. I just, I don't know. And like, what Austria would agree to be on six centers with three fleets? Like, I mean, I suspect this Austria might. <laughs> from earlier in the game maybe that seems that's just crazy to me. it's like he's been on armies all this time he just wants a, a sea voyage for once in his life he's seen the Aust the the german like earlier on in the game just floating around in the, in the north yeah, now with the germany he was like you know what the key is to be a, no a normally land-based power with a bunch of fleets and that's how you're gonna win this game yeah okay i believe it <laughs> But in the meantime, we also see Armenia go north, Sevastopol go north, and Russia just say, all right, we're going to defend against the German. Austria, have fun. Please don't take too many of my centers. Yeah, th this really isn't optimal defense against the German, though, right? Because you would rather have Ukraine hold and Romania go up to Galicia than go to Budapest. I don't oh, see course. why Budapest is a thing that yeah. he did. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Although, the Budapest is the weird part, right? Romania, the rest of these moves are totally natural from the Russian, right? But it would, you, would, you could have just done Warsaw to Livonia, Ukraine to Warsaw, Romania to Galicia, right? And I think you've, like, really stymied the German of offense. Hmm. But... I wonder if he's trying to solve this diplomatically and go, you know, I can attack Austria here, so... Yeah, you know, you have the room to keep going after Italy. But I don't know that that would ever work. Trying to convince Germany that you're not going to defend against Germany when you've clearly explained <laughs> that Germany gets that 17 centers. Okay, that's fair. He's just going to take Warsaw, man. And he's like, oh, yeah, great. I'll, I'll, I'll take Italy. Maybe he does take Italy. Maybe he takes Tunis. Maybe he does that. Like, you can't give Germany any diplomatic space at all, right? It's like, I don't know. I can't think of a good historical analogy of, like, it's like the Gauls trying to convince Julius Caesar when he's blockaded Alasia and that they can solve this peacefully. And then Caesar's like, yeah, sure, we'll solve this peacefully. And then just like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, okay, I get you. Like, there's no reason for Germany to stop this. Uh, yeah, this uh, like a very potent solo I just, effort. I just really don't see this. Why? I, maybe the later moves will reveal why Romania is a Budapest, but surely that's got to be a move the Austria is not happy with. I really yeah. want to see what happens next turn. I'm like so curious. Okay, well, shall we just satisfy that curiosity now? Yeah, with an Mars. Fall 1952. Oh my god. <laughs> Austria and Germany both an Mars. <laughs> Wow, that's more than half the units on the board, right? That is 18 units on the board <laughs> and amaring. And 16 successfully move, assuming both of these players are playing uh, up to... Yeah, no, they are. Well, um, Italy doesn't move. <laughs> yeah, Italy moves nothing. <laughs> so literally the only moves, units Sebastopol, that move. Galicia, and St. Pete, yep. Yep. Wow. Oh, it's the get northern fleets. That's why they did all this. But... If Germany was playing appropriately, then you're not even going to get to build. Right? Because you're going down two in the north. 
Yeah, but uh, here they pop uh, Sweden if they do attack uh, second place, right? No, they don't. They can't even get Sweden. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, in the previous turn, if they whatever, it's fine. Or this is this is okay, but they lost Denmark, so they gained two minus Bulgaria minus Denmark. So Russia's still neutral. Did Russia pop anything? Uh, wait, no, Russia went Budapest and Con up, right? Oh yeah, yeah and minus then Bulgaria. Bu Bulgaria and Denmark down. So they no, they don't gain anything. Um, oh, but both the Russian and the Italian were counting on the the Austrian moving Bulgaria to Greece. <laughs> Look at this; they both supported that move. So they they both wanted the Russians to build the north. Intentional NMR from Austria. <laughs> that would be hilarious. I don't know why he wants to mess with Russia against Germany, but he does. That's uh, great, man. Uh, Goldie, if you're still watching these things, can you clarify on whether this NMR was intentional? Because there is the possibility that this was intentional in order to keep this Austrian unit in Bulgaria. Um, this Russian unit in Budapest is now completely out of position and can get blown up. Well, not blown up, but taken out pretty quickly. Um, and Austria keeps hold of, of this sensor here. Uh, so it's positive in that respect. Yeah, also from like a strategic perspective, Austria wants more of Russia's units to be tied up in the north, defending against Germany, right? Yeah. The ideal for Austria would be every unit that Russia has, except for Fleet Aegean, is tied up in the north, defending. And then Fleet Aegean helps Austria take Venice and maybe get into Adriatic. And then Austria takes, like, takes these Italian centers, right, just to make slow progress against it, and then pounces on Munich to help the Russian out. And then after they take, like, two German centers and gets Germany pushed back from the stalemate line and maybe they like get into Iberia or something they can do a devastating stab on on Russia and take all of Russia's centers in the south that's smart I mean equally possible though is just that the Austrian forgot to enter their orders <laughs> hey 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 let's not <laughs> whatever <laughs> I know we we really want to read in some clever things to this phase. I think we're all, we're both agreed that there's no way this German NMR was intentional, at least. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, what's the upside of Germany not doing anything here? There is uh, absolutely no upside to Germany. Come not doing less anything threatening here. and less likely to solo. Whoa. <laughs> so they don't take you seriously. So you can do it later. All right. Look, man. Germany NMR on accident. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the builds, right? Let's just right. let's get on. Let's move on. So this, th this is a sad position, but it should be mentioned that these players are playing for an exceedingly long time. It's not, it's not that unthinkable that two of them would not get their orders in on time if in one phase during that whole thing. But it is disappointing yeah. to see from a commentator's perspective, especially on a phase like this when Germany is so close to pushing for this win. Um, I mean, that's what happened with France, right? Yep. When France was at, like, 15 centers, he started NMRing, and then it was just... Yeah. Oh. Well, oh, well, let's go through to winter. We are kind of speeding through these this time. Well, actually, I say speeding through it. We spent half an hour on the first two years. So, that's not... <laughs> It's not that speedy, but hey, it's for our standards. It's faster than normal. This is well, true. That, that average is two and a half hours for five years, whereas uh, oh, wait, for so the full five. Austria went down a, a unit even with keeping Bulgaria. Yeah, they lost two. They lost um, Budapest and Khan. Right? Okay. So, their object so what they were supposed to do here, I assume, was support Serbia up to Budapest and kill the unit so that Russia could rebuild. Sure. Because that's why oh, it went into Budapest. Yeah, okay. I think that makes more sense. As a, So it was not a deliberate NMR. Um, I don't see any reason why you would deliberately NMR to get this position. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay, so interesting thing here. Clearly, in our power rankings, Germany is now number one. Yeah, that's just... Yeah. Even with the NMR there, they are still leagues above Russia, just because they have the advantage in the north, this Russian position is not strong against them, 
Uh, sure, it has four units up here, but they have, like, every unit. Um, and they're really close to getting the 17. They have nothing in the Western Mediterranean at the moment, um, so they can swing down and round when they need to. And, yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> That's that. And then second place has to be Russia, just based on dot count. <laughs> 11 is still a lot stronger than 5 or 5. But then which of Italy or Austria is in a possession? Is it a better position? A better position? Better position. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm going to say Italy. Okay, just because of how like they're a lot more defensible? or. Yep. Yeah, Depends Austria's on... got Russian army in Budapest, and it's scary. I mean, that Russian army in Budapest can be knocked out of Budapest pretty easily, right? But I think the armies in Khan and the fleet in, in Aegean are the big, like, ah, uh, oh god. Things for them. Um, the difference between Austria and Italy is both of them are allied to these massive... Uh, powers behind them, but one of them has that massive power sort of at its throat and the other one has that massive power off doing its own thing on the other side of the map. Uh, right. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, in reality, all this does to our powers rankings is swap the top two. Um, but hey, that's still a considerable change. Wait, I'll just go ahead and make this look a little bit neater. There we go. Yeah, and I mean, if we're gonna keep doing the whole, like, how distant are they in the power rankings type deal, then it's gonna... Germany is significantly, significantly stronger than Russia. Yes. Absolutely. Um, I don't think I'm going to represent that on the power rankings here, but hey, you can hear us say it. Um, there's... The Russian position here is weak. It's just... The, People often underestimate, well, how weak a northern Russian position can be, but especially when it's against just one power like this, uh, just the German. Um, so the German has nothing behind them, they can just commit everything in that direction. Uh, this isn't going to hold. It's especially punishing when Germany has two more fleets than Russia. Yep. Four fleets to two is an overwhelming advantage. Like... You are guaranteed to make progress every single turn in this war as Germany against Russia. There's just there's just no chance. Pretty so, much. Um, and with control over the Baltic, you can even push your units into Livonia and such and come into St. Petersburg from behind them. Uh, which just cracks the Russian even faster. Yeah, Norway, Sweden, and St. Pete are going to be lost. It is It is only a matter of when. Yep. And Portugal is already German, so essentially they're already at 17. It's just a case of how long it takes them to get there. Uh, yeah. And then um, what does the board look like when they are at 17? Yep. Uh, I mean, judging based on, on the reactions of these players before, I think a stalemate line will be set up by the time they hit 17. Uh, but then that would be an actual stalemate, which would probably halt the uh which would stop the game um which we know doesn't happen so <laughs> interesting yeah. thing to point out if they get to a stalemate they stall it out right they probably back off and give someone some centers or something um yeah yeah so uh let's go ahead to spring 1953 then here we go um, and, well, there's an attempted convoy into Livonia, it does not work, uh, but... This is a very good turn for the German. Still, yep. Manages to get into Skagorak, manages to get into North Sea with the support, guesses correctly on all that. Um, Pop plus Silesia. managed to blow up Silesia, that's huge, right? The, yes. uh, just having Prussia plus Silesia here is, is well worth not getting into Livonia for... Um, I mean, yeah, and the Baltic Sea didn't need to do anything, because their fleets, both of them, moved forward this turn. Yep. So, uh, And now they have, what, three on Sweden, two on Norway, so uh, the Russian has to guess each turn whether they're going to be attacked in Norway or Sweden. 
uh, with these four units up here. And that's not even uh, thinking about the, the other things Paul 6C could do with regard to Livonia and such. Um, yeah, this is one of those situations where you really wish there were two territories in Baltic Sea, where it was sort of cut down the middle from Kiel over to Bothnia. So you have the fleet up in the northern part of Baltic Sea to go and mess with Sweden, while the fleet in the southern part of Baltic Sea supports you in Livonia. Mm. Be really nice. Yep. But, alas. There's only one. Um, and therefore, you got to figure out what to do with it. Uh, I yeah. think... Germany is probably just going to use it against Scandinavia, yeah? Because... Yeah, almost certainly. There's centers there. Yep. <laughs> I mean, they don't have to. If they go for the Norway guess, they can just have Denmark cut Sweden and then go two into Norway. Uh, but I think that's the more likely one that Russia will defend against, because... Precisely because it frees up Baltic to do other things. Um, that's a sort of a game of the wine in front of me, right? Where it's like, this thing is better for you, therefore, I'll do that thing. But then you know that I'll do that thing, so <laughs> so you'll do the other thing. Clearly not. Do that thing. Yep. That's very good. Yeah. Lots of guessing here. I think if I was Germany, I'd yellow after Sweden. Okay. Just because it's... No one's going to cover Sweden here. Are you kidding me? Who <laughs> <laughs> in their right mind is covering Sweden? Mm. I'd convoy, like, Kiel up to Sweden or something. Okay. Yeah, I'd convoy Kiel to Sweden, I'd cut Norway, and I'd just double support it with Denmark and Skag. Yeah. And, like, yeah, if you have Norway, cut Skag or Akigami, but you didn't. You're not doing that. No one's doing that. <laughs> it's Come interesting to, uh, to think about the Kiel move, though. It's specifically, you said you convoy Kiel up to Sweden. I assume that's just because Baltic Sea is too important of a province to go in with, right? Yeah, we just said we wanted Baltic Sea to do two things in a turn, so... Yep. But uh, we still want to take Sweden, and you want to take it from Baltic Sea, so that if Bothnia tries to cut Baltic, it doesn't do anything. Yep. So That's the great thing about the convoy. It's essentially a move that can't be cut. Uh, well, a move that can't be cut. A support that can't be cut, right? It's doing something that's uh, helping take the province, but without moving out of the province you're in. Um, but yeah. I, I think I messed up that, but hey... <laughs> Uh, you Convoy get the point. Good. Convoy good. This is exactly it. Um, and actually, an interesting move that we haven't mentioned here, Marseille to Piedmont. Um, do you think that's to protect the Italian, or to... I mean, it's going to Tyrolia, right? Yeah, that would make sense. Especially in conjunction with the, uh, the move to Munich here. Um, yeah, and with Austria vacating Tyrolia, like... Yeah, it's important to note the Italian tried to support the uh, the German down to Tyrolia anyway, um, and tried to force Adriatic into Venice. What was going on there? Um, uh, it was just to cover Venice. Right. I that's... don't know why they're not support holding Venice, but this is fancy and also stops Venice from being taken. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Uh, that fleet just likes Venice a lot, I think. Um, it's tired of not being in its sort of its home port. Uh, but yeah, Germany had the option of going down to Tyrolia here. They decided to blow up Cilicia instead, which is probably the right call. Um, uh, especially because Cilicia, they were, well, the Austrian and the Russian were attempting to pull Cilicia down, presumably to try and surround that unit in Tyrolia. Uh, but yeah. Um, Germany has a, a very strong position here. Should we briefly talk about the Austrian moves against the Italian down here? I mean... It's really only Trieste. It, yeah, this is really where we see the, the... Like, if Italy had had Tuscany support hold Venice and Ionian support hold Adriatic, they can still move Apulia to Naples so that if they get forced out of Adriatic, they're fine. But against this particular move set, they actually wouldn't have lost Adriatic Sea. Because the way that Austria and Russia played this, Russia said, I'm going to support Albania to Ionian. You're free to accept that support if you'd like it. Right? And sure, right? That's that's viable. And then it means that Austria could then cut Adriatic Sea and then support Albania to Ionian, and that just works, right? That's totally reasonable. But if they don't do that, you, you can ensure that's the only thing they can get. 
Whereas this way, Austria said, well, I'm going to take Adriatic Sea because I would rather have Adriatic Sea than Ionian, and you let them. And you don't want to give your enemy choice. Hmm, yeah. I mean, actually, if the Austrian had taken Ionian Sea here, Italy would be in a pretty horrible position, right? Um... It'd be pretty awkward. But they didn't do anything better to support Ionian. Like, they didn't have Naples support hold Ionian Sea. Or, yeah. uh, 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 Apulia. Uh, Apulia support Ionian Sea, excuse me. And I understand why, because now that Adriatic Sea got kicked out, that has a place to retreat in the spring, right? It can't just rebuild. So I think it's a reasonable move to not to, to move Apulia to Naples. It's just this whole move set of moving Adriatic Sea into Venice and having Tuscany support that. Like, if they were using Venice to tap something, right? If Venice was tapping Tyrolia, this whole thing makes way more sense, right? This move set suddenly is totally reasonable, totally viable. It, it, it is accomplishing an objective. But because Venice is holding, there's just no reason. It doesn't protect against anything. What would they have tapped? I guess maybe Tyrolia or, yeah. or Trieste? Tyrolia would have been what's being tapped. Tapping yeah. Trieste would have made some sense because then I, I, it, it's, I would consider taking Adriatic Sea from Albania because now you have a unit in Trieste and Adriatic bordering Venice. It's possible. But, like, really, you'd be tapping Tyrolia. But they didn't even do that. They just, like, misordered here. Maybe it was a last-minute change or something. But, yes, this does make a, a lot more sense, this defensive-type move, uh, if if uh, Venice was moving. Um, because this would then be the only way to protect Venice. But, yes, or they strength, clearly so, yeah. changed something. And, as a result, they've lost Adriatic Sea. <laughs> uh, Awkward. Yeah, we'll have to see where it goes from there. Um, I, I really okay. One more thing: the Russian pulling into Galicia here. Obviously, at the moment, it's anti the German units. But as the Austrian, you've got to feel nervous about Aegean, Constantinople, Budapest, and Galicia now. <laughs> uh, I mean, if Russia doesn't want to lose Budapest, Russia's probably not losing Budapest anytime soon. Yep. And, like, we can see this nervousness on the Austrian part from Serbia hold. Um, because, ideally, against the Italian, you'd want to be sending Serbia to Greece here. Uh, but uh, he does not trust that Russian unit in uh, Budapest. He wants to be in a position where he can knock it out if he, can, if he uh, has the opportunity to. Um, which I think is the smart play if, if he gets the chance to here. I don't know why he let it in in the first place. Uh, but yeah, um, shall we go ahead to fall? Let's do it. Let's go, fall 1953, here we go. Um, oh dear, they covered Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> you should well, have gone with my moves. Uh, yeah, taking Norway would have worked out much better. Yeah, um, and like, I don't know why Germany would even go for this move set. If they if they're using Baltic on something else, surely it makes more sense to go to Norway. Um surely. there's always yeah, gonna be Norway plus one... Livonia makes is a better guess here than uh Sweden plus Livonia, but Yeah. I be... mean for that reason For that reason, Sweden's a good guess. Anyways. Well no no no, because <laughs> Bothnia is always going to support Sweden, right? The guess is on whether Finland no, supports Bothnia Norway support or... Livonia. Oh, yeah, okay. That is if actually Bothnia true. Bothnia supports Livonia and Finland supports Norway, you just get to walk into Sweden with strength too. <laughs> I would have put three on Sweden and then tapped Norway, and I would have gotten hosed by this Russian move set. I would have made no progress. Mm. But this Germany didn't really make any progress because they moved Berlin into Silesia instead of into Prussia. Yeah. So, like... Congratulations, they made it into Livonia, but they didn't actually increase the number of units they have on the front line. Well, you say that, but at the same time, they did make it into Tyrolia and Bohemia, which is uh, <laughs> fairly significant. Um, and the Austrian got tired of the Russian being in Budapest and turned around there. Uh, Thank you for the Budapest, but in the meantime, Russia took Bulgaria, so... Yep. It didn't really do anything. This is... And the Austrian it just backs Germany better position. But the the Austrian backs out of Adriatic Sea as well. So the moment he makes progress against the Italian here, he's turning around saying, "Okay, Russia, give me my center back, and I'll defend against you completely again here." Um, yeah, and like this is this is where you start to get really, really scared of a German solo, right? Hypothetically, 
let's say that Germany had moved Berlin into Prussia instead of bouncing in Silesia. So Germany has an army in Livonia, Prussia, Silesia, Bohemia, Tyrolia, and Marseille, right? Yep. How exactly do you hold Warsaw? You you straight up can't in that scenario. Right? You're always going to lose so, Warsaw. Warsaw is gone, and you can take it from Silesia while Munich backfills into Silesia, right? And suddenly, there's still these guesses in the north. Baltic Sea is now 100% guessing against Finland, again, for Sweden and Norway. And so, it's totally plausible that Russia this year loses both Norway and Sweden, right? If you can take Norway via convoy, the North Sea can cover Edinburgh, the natural retreat, and then you just have four on Sweden. Like, it's not impossible. And if then St. Petersburg falls, Moscow can fall too. Like... This whole position is so close to just being stalemated with Germany winning. Because Italy is not going to be in time to cover Portugal. Right? Yep. Marseille is there faster. Yeah, this is true. And, like, right now, this is kind of what needs to happen. The Italian needs to send these fleets uh, west. They've got a little bit more time because of this Berlin incorrect move um, over here. But it's probably not a ton uh, and it's possible this is why Austria is making the change, because Italy said, "Look, Austria, you need, you're going to need me to hold against Germany in the south. You're going to need me to pressure Iberia. I can't do that if I'm going to get eliminated for it. So you have to back off of me if you want me to defend against Germany. So you're going to back off of me this turn. You can go and take some dots off of Russia or whatever. Russia doesn't need these units in the south, anyways. Russia needs everything in the north. So you can go pressure Russia to stop the German solo." And I'll go stop the German solo in the south. Yep. Um, I also say also, viewers, that Steam notification was on my end. I'm very sorry about that. Uh, I've now closed that. But yes, um, this is exactly it, I think. Uh, Austria, Austria's turnaround makes sense from that perspective. If, if uh, it was Italy's condition for stopping the solo, Austria's been very solo aware basically this entire game, I think. Um, so... Yeah, this is certainly the most dangerous the board has felt in terms of a potential solo since, like, maybe since France's initial run, right? Didn't Russia get to, like, 16? I think Russia did get, yeah, pretty close at one point as well. Um, this one feels better, though, because Germany can't get pushed back, right? Yeah. This is, this is all playing from strength. There's zero chance of elimination, whereas Russia has... A very good chance that Russia would get eliminated if Russia tried to. Yep. That's the well, yeah. downside with Russia, right? The position can collapse almost immediately, um, always. And that's probably yeah. what we're going to see in the north here. Um, shall, is there anything more to talk about here, or shall we move ahead? Let's do it. Okay, ahead to uh, winter 1953. Russia puts on fleet in the south coast of St. Petersburg. Where did they get that build from? Was that... Oh, that was from uh, Cilicia getting blown up, right? Yes. Um, so... Do you even want that? Does that does that do I'm anything? I'm sure you want to fleet North Coast. It's so hard to fleet get South out. Fleet South Coast St. Pete doesn't cover Norway. Hmm. Bothley is not on a threat anyways. Like, Army St. Pete is the most defensive. Fleet North Coast gives you more guesses in the future, but like... Norway is still... A, you gotta use Finland on it, and like, if Germany really wants to, Germany could do some weird maneuvering, North Sea to Norwegian, Denmark to North Sea, Baltic Sea convoys, Berlin to Denmark, right? Germany could just commit to try to pound out Scandinavia, and then Norway's guaranteed to fall, right? Yeah. If you do that moveset, how do you save Norway? You just don't. You can't. That's, uh, that's interesting. So something also I haven't considered here... Um, when Norway gets this large, it probably goes to Norwegian, right? Um, yes. And then it could potentially make a run for Iberia with the Italian fleet, which might be good enough to hold the line down there. Uh, That's funny, but totally plausible, you're right. <laughs> so yeah, like, moving, repositioning over to Norwegian Sea is very nice, right? It, yeah. It's one of those moves you like to see as, um, it, you like to see as, as, Germany when you're trying to take Iberia. Yeah. Uh, 
So, but yes, uh, this fleet in the Saint in the south coast of Saint Petersburg doesn't seem very well thought out here. Um, I it, very much disagree with this build. It, it could take Livonia back. Maybe that's the objective, and then try and force Baltic. Um, just have an army because army can also can take Livonia back, and it can also support Norway. Yeah, but it can't. It can't force Baltic afterwards. I think is the downside. Uh, mm, it, it's mean... an odd one. Maybe it's another one of those weird like pseudo stalemate lines around Saint Petersburg that hold it from the south. Uh, but I don't see one here. The last one that we missed included Berlin, which I think is a pretty vital part of it. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no like to hold Sweden without Norway or Baltic Sea. That, there's no way that's a stalemate. No, there's yeah, there's no way you can manage that. You have to and take like, Baltic back at least. Yeah, and I don't. If they take Norway and they get to build another fleet in Kiel, you're not taking Baltic Sea back. This is true. Right? Um, like, very, very confused about this fleet build. Very, well, very confused. Let's go ahead and see how he used it. Uh, spring 1954. And he did go into Livonia with it. Um, and, oof. Germany guesses wrong again in Norway on the Norway slash Sweden front. Um, but he does get Warsaw out of it, which is a plus. Uh, we do actually see the Italians starting to run west, though, now, with Venice going to Piedmont and Apulia going up to Venice. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why not Tuscany to Piedmont? Uh, <laughs> any thoughts on this, Ezio? <laughs> Nope. Yeah. That's, uh, whatever. <laughs> um, you know, it's a move. It's legal. They made it. Why is the fleet back in Venice? This yeah, so this me. is... In the north from Germany, I feel like he missed the ramification, the tactical ramifications of fleet south coast St. Pete and how exposed Norway was. Mm. Like... If they had gone into Norwegian Sea, I'm pretty sure Norway is just guaranteed lost. Mm. Yep. Right. Well, okay, while there's this army in Sweden, right? If there's a fleet in Sweden that can cut Skagrak, it's a whole other world we're living in. But what I'm looking at is you have a fleet in Norwegian Sea, fleet North Sea, fleet Denmark, fleet Skagrak, right? So you get to convoy an army into Norway from Edinburgh with North Sea or Norwegian. It doesn't actually matter in this situation. You support that with North Sea and Skagrak, and you have Denmark cut Sweden. Right. Yep. And then suddenly, there's only Finland that can support Sweden, and you're hitting it with three. Like, that's just, you just popped it. Poop goes to Norway. Yep. Um, and the, you can do this with just these fleets. I was talking about convoying an army over to Denmark with this previous moveset, because I, I think you're going to make more progress in Scandinavia than in the mainland. Um Russia or Germany in this case decided to take Warsaw, but these attacking moves, even with these same fleets, I just don't, I don't like this at all. Mm. This is very sad to me. Very very sad. Yeah, rotating around would certainly have been more effective here. So getting that position around Norway, the uh, yeah. I, the point I is mean... it's guaranteed to work. Like the only way that it doesn't work is if. Um, Russia expects exactly that order sequence and then moves with Norway, right, into some place like North Sea, which yes. I think is. I mean, I thought that he wasn't going to defend Sweden, so maybe he would have done that. But <laughs> it's possible. The um, it should be noted that these this Russian order set was actually really good versus uh, versus whatever Germany tried to do, unless Germany convoyed Berlin up to Sweden. Um, it would have countered pretty much any attack on Norway or Sweden. Uh, this is the defense by attacking sort of method of doing it, where you know that Sweden's probably going to be cut, so you add its strength to Norway by attacking Norway instead of uh, support holding it, and have and Norway useful. cut Skagerrak. Exactly. This is, a, this is different from the Italian situation, because you have something you want Norway to do. 
right? Because you want Norway to move to cut Skagerrak to help defend Sweden, you can't have Norway hold. If you could just have Norway hold, then you can just have Finland support hold Norway and you call it a day, right? But that leaves Sweden vulnerable to an attack from Denmark while Skagerrak supports it. Whereas this way, that's no longer a, th uh, a worry. Yep. Exactly. Um, so, like, and good job to the Russian on this. It did exactly what it was trying to do, this moveset, and uh, successfully protected Norway against a double attack. Um, of course, Russia does lose Warsaw down here. It seems like that might be... No, is that temporary? No, it's probably going to be held, right? Because uh, they have... Uh, Warsaw, Cilicia, Bohemia. Okay, they don't yeah, have pressure. It would be nice if Livonia was an army. Mm. It would. Russia would be in a much better spot if this was an army <laughs> that had come down here they, to... They uh... still do get to recapture Warsaw, guaranteed. It's just... They have to go in from Galicia, right? Uh, Galicia cuts Cilicia, and then Moscow supports Warsaw. Or yes. Moscow supports Ukraine to Warsaw. That works. Um... But, like... I don't know, man. You're gonna go after Baltic Sea, and I mean, okay, to be fair, because Germany made these moves, this is going to work actually quite well for Russia, because are you going to have Denmark support hold Baltic Sea now? Because if you try to do that, then Sweden can even outguess you harder, and then Sweden can cut Denmark while Finland supports Norway. Like, yep. actually, they might do the same, no, you want Sweden to cut Denmark specifically, yeah, it's like... This was looking quite good for um, for Russia now, having this fleet south coast. Yes, but... it's certainly better than it uh, than it, it initially appeared, um, but mainly because <laughs> Germany failed edge. to take advantage of it. Yeah, by going yeah, up north. Yeah, Germany here. didn't hit Norway with everything when Russia's moves had a glaring weakness. Norway, it just didn't matter. Yep. Uh, so let's quickly have a look at the south here. I think something interesting, there is a very interesting move down here in Greece to Aegean with Ionian support. The Italian, so the Austrian is clearly on the Russian side here, moving Budapest up to Vienna and, you know, taking the Russian support. They're moving Serbia up to Budapest, but not so much on the Russian side that they're willing to just let the Russians stay in the Aegean Sea. Um... Which is very fair. That's a very dangerous province. And the Russians got yeah. to be a little bit uh, unsettled now because they have one unit in Turkey to defend against a potential Austria-Italy incursion. Um, yeah, but I think they know that they can't really make that move. Mm. Like, Ionia need is needed in the West. This is probably true. Uh, it depends whether the Russian can secure their front, right? Um, because they are looking a lot better now in the north than they were last time. Yeah, but they're still outnumbered, right? There's still four German fleets. Mm. Like, it's better, right? It's not guaranteed to lose Norway and Sweden in the following turns and such. It's just, yeah, they're probably they're going to hold probably for longer than it than we thought. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and, you know, I already sort of expressed my disappointment at there being a fleet Venice again here. Um, they've put Tuscany and Venice, uh, well, Venice in Piedmont and kept Tuscany where it is, instead of putting Tuscany in Piedmont, which I feel would have been the better way to do that. Especially since it's not evident what Tuscany is supposed to be doing. Um, it's gonna get convoyed over to Marseille or something? That seems, yeah, that seems like the only reason to keep it there in this formation. Well, like, if you really want to have this setup, you can have this setup later. <laughs> yep. Uh, I think it would have been better to put Tuscany in Piedmont, and then you at least have some force you can use against Tyrolia. Um, but yeah, so uh, not a ton more to talk about here, I think. Anything else you want to? Um, I do want to say, I think they discussed the attack on Aegean with Russia, and they told Russia, you need to go back to Khan. I'm pretty sure this sense. was discussed, and they, and Russia knew about it ahead of time. Yep, and Russia probably made the correct decision there to just, you know, accept that they were going to get dislodged anyway and leave. Um, 
because it's always better to seem like you you know you took the initiative and did what the person wanted to rather than them having to force you to do it <laughs> yeah okay uh so let's go ahead to fall 1954. here we well, go solo. okay okay and the germans yep. just pulling everything back well i mean if you're trying to solo into nmr then you probably can't solo right <laughs> Yeah, this is probably true. I mean, they screwed up the tactics to the point where it looked like they were going to lose Warsaw, and then from there you're kind of stalemated, right? Um, especially since it looked like the South was getting their uh, their business in order. Um, but yeah, yeah, this this feels over the top in the North, moving everything west. I mean, I wouldn't want to let Italy back into Iberia. That's fair. Once I've got the lid on it, I want to keep that lid firmly shut. Yeah. I want to get two fleets over to there, keep the lid on mid-Atlantic, Portugal to Spain, Gascony to support Marseille, and just move on with our life. Yep. Uh, important note over here, the way they went into France is quite important. Um, it may initially think, like, you know, I would want to move Burgundy to Marseille because the Italian could attack Marseille here, but the German valued getting more units into France uh, guaranteed, um, so making sure that this unit went, uh, which requires it to go to Gascony and not get bounced, um, over bouncing the Italian unit, especially since they could send Tirolia to Piedmont, make sure there was no follow-up here. Um, yeah, if they lose Marseille in this year, then they're going to retake Marseille in the spring. Yep. next year and there's just no two ways about it so yeah but uh, this feels like a painful position for the germans still because they now have a russian in skagarak and a russian in baltic which is uh not a position you want to have as the german <laughs> yep germany like we said the issue with the german position being this far on the stalemate line is that when they get pushed back they're going to start losing their home centers which is, when France was in this position, we thought France was just fine, right? France concedes German centers, sits in Brest, Marseille, Portugal, and Spain, and says, okay, cool, take what you want, it's fine. The Germany, if they lose Kiel, Berlin, and Munich, it's not clear if they can ever get them back. Yep. And, that... and to be clear, they are going to lose those centers because of these northern fleets in Baltic, Skagrak, Army Sweden, etc. Like, yep. Denmark is going to fall, and once Denmark falls, you're not realistically going to be able to hold from the West. Especially not if you're also getting pressure in Iberia. Yeah. Right, you need six units to hold Iberia, so where's the rest of the units coming? And yeah, coming th it's especially important to hold your home centers if you're doing a back off like this, uh, because you are going to lose units while you're backing off. There's no way you keep absolutely everything that you gain. Um,. And so if you want a resurgence later, you need to be able to have somewhere to build. You need to be able to uh, to start rolling again. It's very, very difficult to solo in diplomacy, just full stop. It's even more difficult to solo if you your unit's starved because you can't build what you need to. Um, so, yeah. Uh, this could be really dire for the German here. Uh, obviously not so dire that they're like struggling to survive because they seem pretty safe in that respect but for their solo chances this certainly seems to have uh, put a stopper in that um, yeah the good news is there are few enough units that there are few enough players on the board that it's hard for germany to be eliminated because germany can ensure that they don't lose any centers to austria or italy in the south Right? Nothing is going to be taken from Iberia. And so if they ensure that Russia is the only one that makes progress against Germany in the north, then Russia needs to take 13 centers from Germany. Russia has 11 centers. So for Russia to take all those centers, Russia would end up soloing. Yes. So Austria and Italy cannot let Russia eliminate Germany. So they can let Russia do a little bit of damage to Germany, but not much. Right? Yep. And speaking of this, uh, we can see the Austrian pulling a little sneaky sneak down here of Aegean into Savannah, um, plus freeing up Budapest for a build. Uh, so clearly he's not 
like he's already thinking about potentially uh, stopping this Russian or making sure that he's keeping balance with the Russian. Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, I would be very tempted to demand that I have all of Turkey as Austria. Well, I, I don't know if you're in a position where you can demand that right now. Um, Watch me. <laughs> See, I feel like if you make ultimatums, like I'm going to let this person solo, if you, if you give them, by this point, by 1954, people have probably figured out whether you're bluffing or not. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, I'm never bluffing. <laughs> yeah, but the, then yeah, the I game's over well. well before this point, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have... I, I, as Austria, I don't think I would have... I think Austria's played this game very well. I don't think he's... If I was German, I would have just soloed a couple times already. If I was French, I would have soloed, but no, nah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the C dot take dot strategy works very well when you need to C dots and take dots. It doesn't work very well when you're on the <laughs> defending side of a stalemate line. And you're just like, oh, really, really Romania doesn't. looks very nice this time of year. I think I'll nab that off my eye. <laughs> it really, really doesn't. But I mean, we haven't. It's the bigger deal is that in this position, right? You can honestly tell Russia you don't need these centers. You really don't. And the only way that you need these centers is if you're trying to solo. And I'm not going to let you solo. You call hold against Germany, and I'll take these centers. Then we call it a day. Easy. Let's move on with our lives. You can disband Constantinople, you can disband Bulgaria, you can disband Romania. You can lose those three units just fine. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll... I, I have a feeling the Russian would not accept that, um, given the current... Uh, well, the the entire state of the game over the... This is where we need to get Italy to be eliminated, right? Yes. Hmm. And then who were the second place team? Uh, I think Russia was the second place team after Italy. I might be mistaken on that. I know that so you Russia, call Russia could win with a solo. I'm going to eliminate Italy. You need to give me these centers so I can eliminate Italy. The thing is, I think Russia could only win with a solo anyway, or win the tournament. Um, so it doesn't really matter whether Italy's eliminated or not. They just need to solo. Um, Italy was in first place by so much. And as long as it's not... I think you've discussed this previously. I'd forgotten that. Yes. Uh, basically, every team needed a solo in order to beat the Italian team. And in fact, with the Austrian, I, I remember Goldfinger telling me he, his team needed a solo with 20 centers. Um, so he spent... A 20 centers <laughs> solo? He was spending the entire game <laughs> trying to figure out how he wins with 20 centers. Uh, which well, is... you're going to just use Austria, right? If you're going to do it, you can do it as Austria. Yeah. This like... is true. You can just, oops, you happen to crack yourself into Burgundy, but, or in, into, yeah, you got into Burgundy via Munich, but you haven't taken, like, Kiel yet or Berlin yet, and then you end up taking, like, Paris, Belgium, and Berlin on the final turn. Still seems because very difficult against things. this opposition, especially from these Austrian positions, although, uh, we do remember that Austria was down to one center at one point, so he's already yeah, multiplied his center Trieste. count by, like, five. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, Fleet Trieste, right? He was never down to just Fleet Trieste. That was the Italian. The Italian was down to Fre Fleet Trieste at one point. He was down to that's Army right. Budapest at one point. Um, that's right, that's right. It was but... the crazy Italian. <laughs> but somehow both of them have crawled back, even though they're not on many centers now. Um, so, uh, anyway, we've kind of got a bit off, sub uh, off topic here. Um... Finally, the Italian shuffles into the position we wanted them to be in last turn, which is putting the army in Venice and moving that fleet out of Venice. Thank you. We do not like fleets in Venice in this household. Um. <laughs> they just happened to do it. It took them a turn to do it, and it meant they didn't take Marseille as, as punishment. Yes, uh, which means they're going to have to disband, which I think ends up being probably ends up being Fleet Apulia, right? Um... Yeah, probably. Yeah, unless they're like, okay, you know, the Germans are not as much of a threat anymore, so I'll just take off Western Mediterranean. Uh, I guess well, that's something to watch out for in the winter. Uh, is there anything else to talk about on this map? Uh, let's do it. Okay, let's move ahead to the winter of 1954. And it's Fleet of Puglia coming off. Austria gets that army build in Budapest. 
with that uh, nice Finland. snipe of, of Smyrna um, and Finland off the board. Sure. I mean, Finland's an interesting one. I suppose he doesn't need it now that uh, Germany's turned around. But it could yeah. have been used. It could have been used. It's just, right, you've already got Bo uh, Bothnia, Skagrak, and Baltic Sea, so Germany is going to have a hard-ish time doing it. Without <laughs> Finland, though, if you ex if as Germany you expect this to be a indication that he's backing off of the north and not going to try to pressure Denmark and stuff, you can get back into Norwegian Sea and North Sea, and you can just guess with your units in the south. It's it's much more awkward though because you do let Italy through. Yep. You kind yeah, of have to get already. these powers fighting first, right? And I suppose you kind of accomplished that with getting Austria to go into Smyrna. That. Maybe yeah, that's possible. What Germany had to do with it. <laughs> well, yeah, but the fact that Austria has done it is definitely going to benefit Germany in some way, um, because I have a feeling this Russian unit, uh, again, the unit in Moscow, is going to dash down to Armenia again, <laughs> get into position to defend Just Turkey. A also, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Actually, it might not, because it is just Fleet Smyrna, which is a lot less threatening than Army Smyrna. Um, but yeah. this this Russian's been pretty possessive of uh, Turkey all game. He's been so possessive of Turkey the whole <laughs> game. He's sent a lot of units to Armenia. I don't know how many, but like that province has been occupied a lot of the time. Um, and I mean, Army Armenia is very good against Turkey. It is. This is true. And for holding Turkey. It's less good for holding Turkey when you're already in Sevastopol. <laughs> this is true. Right, if you if, if there's a hostile force in Sevastopol, then yeah, right? Armenia's the nuts, but... But it's better to be in Syria once you, uh, once you actually yeah, hold Turkey. Yeah, he knows this, and he's been in Syria a lot. <laughs> but he keeps heading back with the unit, because Syria is kind of the one you have to get rid of when you run out of extra units, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's a very nice extra unit to have. This is true. Uh, okay, so uh, 54, it's an even year, which means power rankings. Um, I think it's still Germany first, yeah. Germany 1, Russia 2. The question is, is Italy higher than Austria? Is Austria higher than Italy? Austria has six dots. Austria does have six dots. Um, they Italy do also have Tyrolia, Bohemia, it. Cilicia on their border. Um, and Galicia, Romania, Bulgaria. <laughs> That's why it's a question. <laughs> Whereas, yeah, I don't know. yeah, who is going to attack the Italian here? Potentially Austria, and that's it. Um, yeah, and like, if Germany gets enough fleets down into Iberia and Italy doesn't mess with it, then maybe Italy. But I think I would still put Italy higher than Austria, man. Like, it's, okay, just real talk. From a tournament perspective, Italy is still in first, right? Yeah. Like, from the tournament perspective, Italy is going to win this whole tournament because... Everyone else needs a solo to win. Yeah, but even if Italy gets eliminated, as long as no one solos, uh, exactly. Italy still wins. So it right. doesn't... <laughs> oh, you it, mean power-wise? That Yeah, okay. There's power rankings from the tournament, right? Italy's in first. It's just like, we don't care about the tournament, we care about this game. It just yes. This game is only this game because of the tournament situation, so... Yeah, yes. it's weird. I just noticed that I forgot to update the power rankings after last time and replace Mujus with the Hanged Man, but uh, I will have to do that for next episode. Um, just yeah. keep in mind that that player has been replaced at this point. Um, but yes, so would you put Italy over Austria just based on the fact that Italy... Well, I think, like, it's reasonable to put it either way here. Yeah, Austria I think Italy's has... to survive still. Yes. Because look at this, just Galicia, Romania, Budapest on one side, Bohemia, Tyrolia, Venice on the other. You know, it's the Charge of the Light Brigade, cannons to the left of them, cannons to the right of them, it doesn't matter how many of them there are, they can just get collapsed on in an instant. Whereas, yeah. the I don't Italian... Know if you can count Venice is hostile. Yeah, this is true, but even without that, they're in a pretty tough spot. Um, and Not the Italian the is only going to die if fleets get sent against them, and that requires the Austrian fleet to go against them, and I think that would be a terrible idea for Austria right now. <laughs> yeah, or it would take Austria to, like, let Russia get their fleets into the Ionian stuff, but that's just not gonna happen. 
Okay, so our power rankings stay exactly the same then. Uh, Germany first, Russia second, Italy in third, and Austria down there in fourth. Although the Austrian is not particularly far behind the Italian. It could reasonably be put either way here, I think. So, I think it's pretty significantly far behind of it. You think? Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I would much rather have this Italian position than this Austrian position. I mean, I feel like the Austrian dots are more safe than they appear purely because the German and the Russian aren't going to work together, right? I mean... Well, I mean, we've seen those two work together even in unlikely yeah. situations before, so and I like, guess... Even if they're not accustomed to working together, right? But let's just say Germany tries to take Vienna, right? If Germany attacks Vienna with strength too, then, like, Budapest is going to fall, right? Yeah. Okay, that's fair. And then fair. once Budapest falls, Budapest gets popped, then Serbia gets popped, right? And then if... If Russia does it in the nice way and has Budapest cut Trieste, Vienna also gets popped. And, like, oops, Austria is down to two centers or whatever. And, like, if Russia then uses that, builds Army Sev, moves it to Armenia, takes Smyrna, like, you lose Greece in the meantime. And, oops, two years, Austria is just off the board with no supporting of each other's units. Yeah, okay, that's fair. <laughs> and I guess uh, Italy has the safer expansion path as well in Iberia. It's not particularly likely to produce anything right now, but uh, if they do manage to get a center or two there, they're more likely to hold it than the Austrian is to hold, say, uh, Budapest or Romania. Um, Absolutely. So, but, again, it's the same order, it's just how far behind is it, like, whatever. Yeah. Let's go ahead to spring 1955, then. Um, and here we okay. go. Okay, so, uh, Russia backing off of Germany, um... Er, yeah, Russia backing off of Germany, Germany backing off of Austria, and Russia just sitting tight against Germany. But that's gonna mean Russia loses Bulgaria. Yeah. Uh, although the Austrian did, I think, anticipate him. No. Why would- why did the Austrian go to Aegean? Well, because they thought Khan was going to Aegean. Yeah, but surely you just go to Khan if... Oh, I suppose uh, maybe they thought Bulgaria would backfill. Um, yeah, and you don't want to let the Austrian... You don't want to let the Russian into Aegean. That's too important a position, a position in this war. Yes. So I think I think this is a reasonable guess. And, like, Bulgaria is guaranteed capture. If Russia knows that's happening, then Russia can have Khan go to Smyrna and Bulgaria covers Khan. But I think you're still content to take Bulgaria and trade popping Bulgaria... For con or for Smyrna, when then you still have gases on Smyrna the f uh, in the following year. Yep. That's that's something I'd be pretty happy to do. At the same time, you can just go back to Smyrna and then you can take Bulgaria whenever you want. And if they do the same move where they tap Smyrna, then you can do it. Actually, I take it back. It's probably better to cover Smyrna then, because you can do this whenever you want. You can have this guaranteed capture of Bulgaria. So wait on it. Take the guess later. Yeah, so basically you can send a G into Smyrna here and either just go back into Smyrna, which is fine, I guess, um, or if they try and bounce Smyrna, they probably send Bulgaria's con behind it and then you take Bulgaria anyway. Uh, so yeah. That... And you, can, um, you can actually guarantee this, right? Because you, you have Budapest to cut Romania, so yep. that even if Bulgaria holds, you still attack Bulgaria with strength too, from Serbia or Greece, doesn't really matter which. And then you can even cover Budapest by using the same same tactic where you have Trieste support Vienna into Budapest. And because Budapest is cutting Romania, it's the only way to support hold Budapest. Yep. Um, yeah. And I mean, so here we're seeing the Austrian going against the Russian. Like, as you can see, they tried to knock the Russian out of Galicia. So clearly they believe the German things. But... Like, what is the German actually intending to do here, then? Um, they seem to be rotating around to try and take the Mid-Atlantic Ocean area. But there's no SC there. <laughs> this is purely for defending Iberia. They seem to be making up with all of their direct neighbors. Um, which is an interesting yeah, except, approach. Except the Italian, right? Italy is clearly going against Germany. Yes. Um, but, but Italy just went against Germany relatively ineffectively. Because they're not going to take Spain, right? Yeah. And now they don't have any pressure on Marseille. 
They needed Tyranny and C to be in Gulf of Leon. Yes. Because then they have a guess from Marseille slash Spain, but as is, they have nothing. I, I would much rather have seen Tyranny and C to Gulf of Leon here. That's just... Especially considering there was a decent chance of English Channel to the Mid-Atlantic Ocean, um, which would have just yeah. bounced the entire Italian convoy train here. Um, the convoy train move movement I mean, train. if you really wanted to go after Marseille, which is... Honestly, quite reasonable. You could have had Western Med support Gascon into Spain, turning to go for Leon. Oh boy! And then, and then you cut Spain, and then you take Marseille. That that would have worked perfectly here. Um... Yeah, but if you, it, it does mean that Germany ends up in Mid Atlantic Ocean. It's the assumption. Yes. Um, and I don't know if that's worth it or not. I assume it is because with only two fleets, you're not going to make any progress beyond Mid Atlantic Ocean. So. Even if you get in, what are you going to do now? Like, it's hard to see. Yeah. I See, this is a position where I think Italy would have preferred Western Mediterranean to be bounced. Um, being in Mid-Atlantic Ocean is just not ideal because it's always going to be cut. Uh, <laughs> and yes. and to, if you want to be bounced there, surely you just want Centurion to Leon because you're expecting not to get in if you go to Western Mediterranean. This Absolutely. feels like a bit of a blunder here. Um if... Yeah, and like a surprisingly big blunder considering the only difference between Western Med and Gulf of Leon is Marseille, basically. Yep. It's uh, like, what? That's a big deal. Yeah, um, and the Italian tries to get uh, Trieste into Tyrolia. Austria does not take that support. Obviously, they're just going anti Russia here. Um, and Russia, because they're backing off of Germany, they're just trying to wait and see, I think. They just wanted to stay aligned with everyone. Obviously, that doesn't work out, because the Austrian is now against them. Yep. So, something I absolutely love about this game, and that you don't see in all that many diplomacy games, is how often people are flipping. Like, these, these people are opportunistic as hell. <laughs> Uh, especially the Austrian. I, th I feel like he flips, like, every every other turn kind of thing. Um, and... Yeah, and I mean, you've seen Germany and Russia be allied for the first, whatever, 40 years of the game, 30 years or something crazy, and then since they broke their allegiance, they've just flipped a ton. Yes. Ba basically, what we're seeing here is players at the top of the game... Mm in an incredibly high-stakes fight that everyone is now fully committed to winning because it's gone on for 50 years. <laughs> uh, and yeah. I, I'm loving it. Uh, <laughs> this is, this was a great game to commentate uh, and con will continue to be, I hope. Um, so, yeah, is there much more to talk about here? Uh, I think we've about covered everything. I think this phase is good. I want to see... I want to see if Austria gets a build from Russia or not. Yeah, let's go ahead and see that. Uh, fall 1955. And they do. They take Bulgaria, although not in the way no, we were expecting they don't get a them build, to. Because they don't cover Smyrna. Oh, they lost Smyrna. Oh, man. They could have... No, they would have lost Budapest if they'd... Uh... If they had done it in the way I was hoping they would. Uh, which if they'd was... done it the way I suggested, with Trieste supporting Vienna and Budapest, Budapest cuts Romania, Serbia, uh, agree support Serbia to Bulgaria, Aegean to Smyrna, then they would have taken it. That would have worked, yep. Uh, although, I think all of their home centers would have then been covered, so... Um... <laughs> <laughs> that would have been the downside, unless they yeah, could build on some. Area. Like, that's fine. We're content with that. Uh, but man, I mean, something important to note here, Bohemia tried to cut Vienna, uh, Munich tried to move into Tyrolia, the German has flipped back to the Russian side again, <laughs> in this war down here, uh, immediately after backing off of the Austrian front, and clearly the Austrian knew this because the Austrian supports the Italian up into Tyrolia. And um, we still got Marseille though. Italy did, uh, and... Interesting moves from the German here. I suppose they had to choose whether to cover uh, which which one of their centers to cover here. Um, Only if they wanted to force Mid Atlantic Ocean, but you don't have to force Mid Atlantic Ocean, right? You don't have to, um, but I think even if you weren't forcing Mid Atlantic Ocean, you have to be careful about Spain. Yeah, 
Oh, no, 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 you, because you could just move English Channel to Brest. Yeah. yeah, that feels like it would have been the better move here. Um, well, I mean, hey. But I suppose Germany's got units to spare right now. <laughs> um, so, and with Mid-Atlantic, Fleet Mid-Atlantic Ocean, they're almost certainly going to take back Marseille soon, yeah. Um, I don't see any way Italy holds on to that for any amount of time, especially with nothing in Gulf of Leon. Yeah, Army Gascony, Army Burgundy indicate that uh, you're probably going to um, you're probably going to retake Marseille. Yes. I mean, the it's, big thing though, it gives uh, Italy a build, so maybe they can figure out yeah, some way to gonna, use that. It's a, year, it's a build for a year, but there's no nothing to use that unit on. Mm. Right? It means they could turn an army into a fleet, but I think they'd like two armies, two fleets right now, so yeah, or well, they could turn a fleet into an army. They just vacated Venice. <laughs> I feel like that's a terrible idea, but it would be hilarious. Yeah, um, they could. I mean, it is it is a thing. Yeah. We'll see what they build, right? You don't that want would've... to stick too many armies in Italy when you're cramped up like this, because you need fleets to get out, right? <laughs> that's the... Uh... Yeah, but you also just don't want to be cramped like this. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I don't... I'm not sure he's got much of a choice... Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, other things here. I mean, should we talk about why the Austrian went for this move set? The double bounce on Romania was just making sure that whatever Romania supported, it wouldn't. It it would get cut. Um. So it couldn't take either Budapest or Serbia. So it's a much yes. more defensive move set than it looks. Um. It's a little odd to me that Austria combined this with Vienna to Budapest. I would have expected Austria to combine this with Vienna to Galicia. Yes. Because that would ensure that Budapest couldn't be taken, and Serbia couldn't be taken, and then, right, they would have held those two centers, but still have this play for Bulgaria. Um, it's just, it's awkward because the way that this played out, if Constantinople's support holds Bulgaria, then you don't take Bulgaria. If Constantinople taps Smyrna, you lose Smyrna. And you probably take you take Bulgaria in that world, but you're losing Smyrna, so it doesn't matter. Right? It's like this move set doesn't actually beat anything. Yeah. Right? It doesn't lose Budapest or Serbia, that's true, but you could accomplish a very similar effect by having whatever. By doing it differently. I yeah. guess and sorry, this move set even risks Budapest, right? It does, if... but I think it all, it pretty much always takes uh, Romania if it, if it loses Budapest. Um, it because would, Galicia it loses, could push. It, it does take Romania, but if it does, but Bulgaria moves into Serbia, then you lose Budapest, get Romania, lose Serbia, get Bulgaria, <laughs> oh, and lose Smyrna. So, uh, yeah, just to illustrate this for viewers, right? Um, this move set, like this exact move set that happened, just with Romania moving into Budapest instead of Galicia, uh, would have resulted in the Russian taking Budapest and Serbia here, and the Austrian taking Bulgaria and Romania. So it would just be a complete reverse of units over here. <laughs> that would be kind yeah, of hilarious to see. Khan would then have moved into Smyrna. Yep. And so, when all said and done, Russia ends up plus one. Yes, and important to note that could have all been prevented by Vienna to Galicia instead of Vienna to Budapest. Vienna to Budapest doesn't seem to accomplish very much here. Um, the it means that if Budapest yeah. somehow got into Romania, which seems impossible because Serbia is bouncing in Romania, then you wouldn't let them walk in, right? If you were expecting Budapest to make it into Romania, then yeah, this would stop Galicia from walking into Budapest, but. Maybe this was a last-minute change. Maybe he was planning on having Trieste support Vienna into Budapest previously. Um, but that makes sense because um, that yes, that would be that would have more point to it. Uh, but uh, yes, it's very possible that he saw that the Italian was going to do this last minute and got asked for this support and changed that, but didn't change the rest of his orders. Uh, yeah. Of course, with 48-hour phases, there's not really too much of an excuse for having last-minute decisions like this that mess up half of your order set, but not the... You oh, know, you did not change the rest. It only wasn't around until five minutes before the phase. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. Um, totally plausible. 
Is there anything else we want to talk about here? This Russian rotation, maybe, of Finland to Sweden, Sweden to Norway, Norway to Barents. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have expected this, right? I would have expected to see Finland to St. Pete, looking to get the army back to the mainland. Yes. This feels anti-German, um, especially it's considering... The army in the north. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty yeah, much locked in that that army is staying there. Um Unless you convoy it out, I suppose. There's always the potential of moving it to Livonia, but... But if you were moving it to Livonia, then Bothnia convoys to Livonia. Yeah, you can do it now. <laughs> um, and moving uh, Fleet Norway up to Barents and Sweden to Norway just feels more anti-German because it's putting... It did, despite the fact it's not actively taking Norwegian, it's setting up to attack Norwegian um, and push in on the German. Uh... Which, you, you've got to think the German will notice, but maybe he just doesn't care about that right now. <laughs> Especially since he's in Cilicia, so it's kind of like, oh, okay, I'm doing this as well. Um. <laughs> but yeah, uh, shall we go ahead to the winter then? Let's do it. Alright, uh, winter 1955. Fleet Naples. Did anything? Oh yes, okay. The Italian had one build. Um, and it does end up being this fleet in Naples, uh, which may well not be able to do anything before it gets eliminated again by the German capturing Marseille. Uh, <laughs> so, let's go ahead to the spring. Spring 1956. Anything stand out to you here? I mean, nothing stands out to me immediately. This just looks like a whole bunch of tactics. Okay. Um, so one move in particular does stand out to me, which is Norway support Barents to Norwegian. Uh, we do see the Russians sticking in a random support hold of Denmark. So he's going, hey, you know, Germany, I'm friendly, but I am just positioning my units around the North Sea. <laughs> in a very friendly way, obviously. It's all very yep. friendly. Um, which... Yeah, you gotta wonder, like, you've got to imagine that Germany can't be that happy with it, but maybe he's still just going, okay, well, there's not a ton I can do about this right now, or it's not that bad. Um, yeah, there was also a German misorder here. Burgundy held, instead yes. of supporting Spain to Marseille. Oof. That's painful. Um, although, I mean, he's still got a position where he can take it next turn, right? <laughs> Um, I mean, probably. Uh, Burgundy and Gascony support Spain to Marseille, and then Mid-Atlantic Ocean covers Spain with strength, too. Yep. Yeah, that still works. Uh, it just feels bad. Yep. Would have been nice to pop Marseille, but hey. Well, uh, so this was an, a kind of odd order set for this anyway, because there was a potential that... Um, no, okay, there wasn't. I was thinking there was a potential that Spain could get blown up here with Marseille being supported the other way, but that's exactly what uh, Mid-Atlantic Ocean to Spain prevents. Um, but Mid-Atlantic yep. Ocean to Spain with Portugal's support prevents that by itself. You don't need Gascony's assistance as well. Uh, no, you did not. This means that if you were getting into Marseille, which is pretty likely if Burgundy makes the support, then you get your fleet into Spain... Um, Wait, but there's only one unit. No, this was just double support mercy. All right, great. Okay. Um, so. I thought North Africa could support Western Med into Spain, is what I was thinking. And then you wanted three to make sure you get your fleet into Spain, but that can't happen. So. Yeah, North Africa does not connect to Spain. Um, this is actually a mistake that's easier to make on the web dip map than on the backstabber one, because this little gap between uh, North Africa and Spain on the web dip map almost looks non existent. Um, but these players are veteran, veterans enough to, to know that North Africa does not connect to Spain. Uh, yeah, if you're really curious, you can try to move Spain to North Africa, and then it'll save via convoy. <laughs> and if you try to move it to not via convoy, then you, you don't have that. Yep. Although, admittedly, that's something you can do on WebDip, but not on Backstabber, because Backstabber lets you enter any orders you want to. Um, <laughs> regardless right. of whether they're legitimate or not. Uh, so we've talked a bit about this side of the map and Germany not making any progress. Let's have a look at the other side of the map, the east over here. Um, with 
the very first thing that, that, that's happened is uh, Italy tried to tap Munich, which I don't really see the point of. I guess there was a potential that they thought that Burgundy was being pulled down and maybe Munich would go in behind it, but it seems a little pointless. Um, and as a result of this, they lose Tyrolia, which is painful. Uh, they don't have the units to cover all of this right now. Yeah. And in the meantime, Russia took Bulgaria from the Austrian and didn't lose Romania and only got bounced out of Galicia. So I believe that Russia can consolidate and hold Bulgaria and Romania this turn. Yep. So Austria is just going to be down one now. Bad, bad news for this Austria-Italy alliance. Um, yeah, I think they can protect Venice, right? Just by having Piedmont move back to Venice, Marseille... Pull, pull out of Marseille because you know that Marseille is losing is being lost anyway. But then even Marseille could be disbanded uh, by Tyrolia to Piedmont here, um, which yeah, that's certainly it would have been far better for Tyrolia to just hold. Uh, maybe they didn't know they were getting the German the, the German the Austrian support hold until too late. Uh, yeah, maybe, but just even still, right? I don't know. Whatever, it's fine. Like. It's a reasonable thing to just t throw a tap out there in the middle of nowhere, but whatever. Yep. Um, so, and uh, as you talked about on the Russian front here, Russia does successfully take Bulgaria. Um, the Austrian move set was a little bit aggressive. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it was justified in being this aggressive. There's... Uh... There's very little chance you take Constantinople off of this position. There's also very little chance you get Romania. Um, yeah, at the same time, your position is not getting any better. Like, yes. if you let Russia get into Ukraine, and still in Galicia, then this is bad. Yeah. Right. You're, you're never going to take Romania, and eventually something's going to happen where, like, Russia backs out of Sevastopol, gets it into Armenia, and, like, brings Smyrna back out the Black Sea, or even just gets a build, and then builds Fleet Sev, and then you're still going to get popped. So you're so, saying like, it kind of has to be done out of desperation here, you're trying yeah, to... If you don't, yeah, if you don't make progress now, you're just never going to make the progress, and so I, I kind of agree with like, doing something greedy. It does suck that I think these moves cover everything, right? Rome is tapping Bull, Smyrna is tapping Aegean, so Khan is safe. And then there's two on Romania from Galicia, so Romania is safe. Yeah, so Russia gets these orders in, and there's zero risk to them. Although it should be noted that this is the spring phase, um, so Austria can actually guarantee forcing Bulgaria back, but they have to do it from Aegean, uh, which does not feel good <laughs> unless you yeah. have the italian back filling it um and even then Which, like fleet bulgaria fleet greece fleet aegean is not a great position to have because it's so easy for fleet bulgaria to be blown up dude if we had moved this fleet bulgaria to the east coast right if it could just teleport somehow <laughs> oh, oh it's such a different world but it's just not the world I we're mean, living in that's why he's trying to get it through constantinople it would be so good on the other side um but yeah, that's exactly why like russia has been defending eastern med yeah <laughs> if someone moves to eastern med this turn right because because russia has an aneurysm right <laughs> then we're in business because yep. fleet con fleet aegean they get into bulgaria but who cares if you kick me out of con then i get the black sea Ah, oh, maybe, but yeah, uh, Serena, you can always assume it's going to tap at G and her support hold con. Yes, so. because basically if an Austrian fleet or an Italian fleet, or basically any non-Russian fleet ever gets into the Black Sea, it's going to stay there forever um, because it's so powerful <laughs> and Russia cannot allow that to happen. If that happens, Russia may well have lost the game just because they lose control of this entire south area. Um, so... Yeah, they're, they're defending Constantinople with their lives, and it's working. They get Bulgaria back. Uh, not a ton more to talk about here, I think. Shall we just go ahead to the fall? Let's do it. Okay, fall 1956. And Bulgaria does get blown up, uh, but not in the way I was thinking they would have to do it. Um, 
pulling a Jin up. They... Oh, no. Yeah, they didn't need to pull a Jin up anyway. They could always cook Constantinople. Okay, so this was the sensible way to do it. Why do I trust you when you give me tactical things? I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't look at it that closely because I looked at you and said, oh, you have to take it from a Jin. I'm like, well, I, I believe it. Oh. <laughs> this is the problem of being like... Oh, what is it now? 16 or 17 hours into this... Uh, <laughs> into this commentary. No, that's probably too much. It's, it's maybe like 15. Um, oh, I, I think I'm gonna we're still blame 17, it. right? Because it's been like... It, uh, these things were averaging like, what, three hours per video, right? Three hours per video, and uh, we've done and five. It's, it's so, video, right? So it's about 15, right? But um, it, no, wasn't it 15 after the first five? This is the sixth? Oh, yes. Okay, so we we're are like two hours into this one. Uh, 16 I think we're like 17. 17 hours in. Okay, so I'm going to blame that on me missing these tactical shots. Although, yes, you would be justified in thinking, hey, I've been commentating this thing for 17 hours straight now. I should be able to spot when something can cut <laughs> something else. Yeah. But yes, so this is the obvious way to do it. You have Aegean, tap Constantinople, nothing can support hold Bulgaria, so then you attack Bulgaria with two. Um, and Russia obviously knew this. Uh, they have better eyesight than I do, apparently. Um, and so they try to just pull Bulgaria out. Uh, but really, they should have had Smyrna support that if they wanted it to work. Because right now, what they did was get Bulgaria disbanded. Opt again. <laughs> but this time, <laughs> Sev is built, right? Because previously Sev was open, so they just rebuilt the army in Sev, but now they have to rebuild the army in Warsaw, which is much worse, right? Yeah. Like, this is... For losing Tyrolia and Marseille, this was remarkably good for Austria. Yep. Right? And didn't they get Tyrolia last year? And then it was lost, or did they get yeah, Tyrolia? Yeah, uh, Italy got into no, Tyrolia last it. year, and then... It was, yeah, the, the spring of whatever 54 yeah okay um so yeah this like i i can't help but notice that i think bulgaria must be like the most deadly zone on the map for armies at this point there have been so many units blown up there um this game, yeah <laughs> bulgaria's had some units get popped yep uh but yes so um over here the the russian has lost galicia they'll get a build uh so they can secure it, but the Austrian has a decent position. Um, of course, it's it's made a bit more problematic by the fact they have to defend Venice here. I don't know why they bounced the unit going back to Venice. Italy had um, two armies, they didn't need to. Yeah, because Marseille is covering Piedmont, you don't actually need to self-bounce in Venice this turn. Maybe Austria was trying to ninja Venice. <laughs> maybe, maybe this wasn't a great one. Maybe Austria said, I need a unit. Give me oh, Venice. My god. That would be amazing if you go, okay, hey, hey, Italy, you know, you can use Piedmont to support hold Marseille this turn. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure that that dastardly German doesn't get into Venice for you. <laughs> sure. Which is never going to work, but yes. Is like, I can hope for a unit here. Um, and hey, if they'd have gotten in, it would be an interesting spot, but uh, obviously they do not. Um, but this is exactly the problem with the uh, Italian letting um, the German into Tyrolia. Now their unit in Marseille gets disbanded, and because they lose the supply center at the same time, they can't even rebuild an army. They're down to just one army protecting the north of the Italian Peninsula, which needs two armies to defend it. Uh -huh. Yeah, but now there's this fleet in Eastern Med, right? Then um, there's potential for them to gain something from Turkey, right? It's possible. Uh, especially since one of these Russian units has now been blown up down here, but I have a feeling that Sevastopol will just go down to Armenia to... Uh... <laughs> but I mean, in the, in the spring, right, you have Greece, Skotokan, and Aegean supports Eastern Med to Smyrna. Yes, that would work. There's the Turkish center going. This is true, and the Russian has, like, can't allow Greece in, well, Bulgaria into Constantinople because that lets it through into the Black Sea, so the Italian unit probably takes the center. Um, which is, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, so they really just need to protect their homeland for one phase, well, one year, um, until they can get a build. But that is a little difficult because of this uh, German advance. 
Um, you need the Austrian but to successfully help. It's not help you. as scary as you might think. Um, so, <laughs> Italy made it into Mid Atlantic Ocean because English oh. Channel accidentally held. Right, it it got scared by the German fleet in Norwegian and in Norway. The Russian ones, yeah. And so they self bounced in Edinburgh, but then I think Germany thought they could support Hold North Sea because they're self bouncing Edinburgh. Illegal move doesn't actually work, <laughs> and so Italy got into Mid Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. And so if Italy, but it, because of this, Italy has the space and the time to bring Western Mid back to Tyrrhenian Sea, or. You can go fully on into Tuscany, where they can sit tight for a little bit. I think Italy is going to be fun. Yeah, well, I guess we'll see on that front. Do we want Probably to discuss anything else here? The uh... is there anything that stands out to you that we haven't talked about? I think we're good. Okay, yeah, I think uh, I. I mean, I missed this uh, that North Africa actually got into the Middle Atlantic Ocean. That is huge. Um, obviously not in the case of Germany needing to defend themselves very much. Uh, if Italy sends this unit up north, it's basically killing it, because they can't really gain anything as a lone unit. But it does delay the German, probably for a turn. Um, so, let's go ahead to the winter. Assuming there is a winter, there is a winter. Uh, Army Warsaw Fleet Kiel. Um... And, of course, the Italian does not need to take anything off because they got forced disbanded in Marseille. What do you think of K Fleet Kiel? It means that Russia's quaking in his boots. <laughs> quaking in his boots. I mean, the German doesn't really have the units to send against the Russian right now, I think. Um, the yeah, the so amount that's spread out. I would argue that Germany does need all these units... To defend Iberia against three Italian units. <laughs> That's fair. But it takes a while to get them back, right? Not um, that long. I suppose Irish up to North Atlantic Ocean. English Channel needs to go to North Sea and North Sea to Skagerrak. But you're relying on the Russian not, like, bouncing North Sea or attempting to we stop We assume that Norway. happens, right? But, like, let's say... So, let's say that Norwegian bounces North 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 Atlantic and Norway bounces North Sea and Bothnia bounces Baltic, right? You've still lit up in Skagerrak. You get a little punished if they go exactly my way to Skagerrak and then you don't make any progress. But if you want to ensure progress gets made, you do something like Liverpool supports North Sea to Edinburgh, English Channel to North Sea, and then Irish to North Atlantic. Mm. Right? And you're just like, come at me, Italy. What are you going to do, bro? Mid Atlantic Ocean going to take Spain? Ooh. <laughs> right? right? You just have Portugal support Spain and Gascony support Marseille and like, move on with your life yep um so i mean yeah um, fleet keel makes sense from a point of view that it threatens the baltic and you don't really want russia to have complete control over that space it's a very important space um and worst case scenario you can just set up a self bounce there but yes uh so Shall we go ahead? Oh no, we've got power rankings. They haven't changed. They haven't really changed, no. I think the Austrian is in a slightly better position than they were before, yeah, but it's Austrian not. Yeah, in a better position than last time, but the power rankings are the same. <laughs> you think that the Italian is still in is still in a better spot than the Austrian with only one unit in their north, uh, in the north of the, their peninsula? Italy's not going to die. <laughs> no okay. chance. Not in a million years. What happens if the German offers support for Trieste to Venice? <laughs> Would you take if that I'm as Austria? Austria? I don't take that. You can't take that. You accept it. You say, Yo, thanks, Germany. What a great idea. I want to take Venice. What a good idea. Hey, Italy, I'm supporting you into Smyrna anyways, so it's still fine. You're not going to lose anything. Right? <laughs> Actually, maybe you do even just take Venice, but then once you're in Venice, you just support whole Piedmont. <laughs> That's an option. I'm not sure how oh, yeah. happy Italy would be about that. You're um, supporting Italy this Smyrna, so Italy's staying neutral, right? Okay, yeah, I guess so. It's, it would be kind of hilarious to see. Um, yeah, like if if, they, if Germany offers me that, right? I say do it in the fall. Do yeah, I say fall. okay. If you back out of Cilicia and Bohemia, then I'll do it. 
or if you bounce it back out of Bohemia at the very least. Um, and, uh, and smooth solution of pressure while you're at it. Yeah. <laughs> or you say, go ahead and move Bohemia up to Cilicia and Cilicia up to Prussia, yeah. Just uh, say Bohemia to Cilicia and then move Cilicia wherever you want and, like, whatever. <laughs> There's, like, a 50% chance that it just goes into Prussia because that's a good place for it. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, you try and keep Italy right. on, if, on the good side. If Germany is offering that deal to Austria, Austria is in a significantly better position than Italy is. Okay. Mm. But it depends on whether Germany actually chooses it's, to offer that deal. It's literally offering that to Italy, and, like, I don't think there's a chance that Germany is offering <laughs> that to Austria. Yep. Speaking of which, I, mean, I just for like... I would Germany offer Germany back to 14, right? Germany didn't actually lose any centers after backing off in the north. This is true. Right? So I, I kind of forgot about that. We might, yeah, and it's possible the players did as well. Obviously, the Russian is not in as dire a spot in the north as they once were. Um, but, like, but they can still lose these centers, and it's not like immediately obvious that the German would be taking them, which actually gives the German an advantage in the solo shot, because it okay. gives them that chance to get over the line. The real reason why Italy is better than Austria in this position is that Italy has the fleet mid-Atlantic Ocean, and that's an important fleet in the war against Germany, right? Yes. So you need to keep it on the board. Um, that's an important fleet to survive, and so Austria can't let Italy die, but Italy can let Austria die. Yeah. This... In fact, if Italy let Austria die to the Russians, I think Italy would love it, because... <sighs> As long as nobody solos, it's fine, and Italy just stays as the third power, balancing Austria and Germany. Right? Yeah, Russia and Germany, the uh, the big two. And then Italy just says, yeah, I'll be like a four power in Iberia, and you guys won't let each other solo, right? Well, let me take Iberia from Germany, and then Germany takes St. Pete. Russia, you take my Italian peninsula, and it's a stalemate. No one can do anything. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, although, obviously, you have to find a way to kill Austria without anyone soloing, which is the hard part of that. Uh... <laughs> yes. Yeah, and like in this position, if Russia makes too much progress against Austria while Austria is in Galicia, then Austria can help Germany into Warsaw, yeah. which would be a problem. That would be a massive problem in the current situation. That's exactly what Germany is hoping to do with this whole backing off thing. I think just get into a position where someone won't mind him getting over the line and then he can go for his win. Um, well, I mean, so our power rankings at the end of this stay exactly the same. Germany first, Russia second, Italy third, and Austria in fourth. Shall we go ahead to the spring? Let's do it. Okay, uh, spring 57. Here we go. And, uh, oh, the German does not offer that support of Trieste to Venice. I was well, hoping it for it. it. But it certainly wasn't taken. <laughs> yeah. Um, certainly, there was no agreement about that. And, whoa. Whoa. And Austria ends up in Romania? They do. And the... if they don't even lose Bulgaria as compensation? Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Well, oh, this is fine, though. This is fine. Um, so, okay. There are now three units on Smyrna, right? Because Sevastopol made it to Armenia. And the Sevastopol yes. to Armenia here was a very important move. Um, because it meant Romania can retreat to Sevastopol. So there's three on Romania and three on Smyrna. And none of those units care about each other, right? Because it's Galicia, Ukraine, Sevastopol, Constantinople, Ankara, Armenia. So Constantinople, or, or not, sorry, Bulgaria has a choice because serbia supports romania that's the only move that it can do that's useful and aegean supports smyrna that's the only move that's useful now bulgaria has to choose do i support hold romania or do i tap oh wait no bulgaria can't it's south coast all right i take it all back bulgaria taps constantinople mm. yes uh and the russian has to keep constantinople no matter what right that's a key part of his strategy um, yep. So. But you just have Ankara support Khan and then Armenia cut tap Smyrna. Yeah. So right, Russia else. doesn't lose anything more on that front. They do get Romania back. There's nothing Austria can do to stop that. So it's not as bad for the Russian as it first appears. Um, 
They did manage... <laughs> they went into Galicia with three supports, which was an amusing overkill given there was nothing staying there. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, but, it was... Yeah, Fiona it makes couldn't sense. support Hulk Galicia, right? This guaranteed it. Yep. Um, and the Russian bouncing Budapest ends up being pretty important here, um, making sure that the Austrian can't have three units on Romania. Um, meanwhile, on the other side of the board... Well, not on the other side of the board, on the other side of Trieste... <laughs> Uh, the Italian-Austrian self-bounce in Venice to keep it safe, and the German goes for the one move that counts as that, which is taking Piedmont. Uh, although, admittedly, the other move that could have counted it was Tyrolia's support, Trieste Venice, which I'm very disappointed not to see. That would have been pretty great. <laughs> they could have also taken Piedmont from the other way, right? This is true. Tyrolia supports Marseille to Piedmont, that which... That feels like better the better to move. Pressure Venice. Hmm. Hey, and you could have had Burgundy move to Marseille right behind it. Okay, so I get Gascony to Brest. That makes sense with the fleet in the Mid Atlantic Ocean. I don't think you necessarily needed it because if that Italian unit goes to Brest, it's kind of it's screwed. Popping it. Yeah. yeah gonna pop it in, the, in the fall. But I get it not wanting to lose that uh, that province. Um, Burgundy to Ru is odd. Well, he's uh, going anti-Russian now, right? But then why is he going Kiel to Heligalam Bight instead of to Baltic? Because now he has plausible deniability. Also, Heligalam Bight, it borders the North Sea. And I care about the North Sea. <laughs> this is true, I guess. Um, so yes, this, this whole pulling Tyrolia down into uh, Piedmont thing... Would have been more effective the other way, but he clearly wasn't willing to commit the units to, uh, well, to hold Marseille uh, behind it. Although, he didn't really have much to worry about, because this Western Med fleet is not going adjacent to Marseille, apparently. Um, so, the interesting thing in the north here, as you talked about, he has plausible deniability going to Hel Heligalam Bight, but it's clear that Burgundy to Ruhr... He's probably coming here either to be anti-Russian or because he's paranoid about the Russian being anti-him. Um, and the Russian, although he puts in Sweden support hold Denmark, he also taps the North Sea and goes straight into Edinburgh. He just walks in. Um, which is interesting, because the, the, uh, the German can do stuff about that, but with him vacating the English Channel, it's a lot harder for him to manage. Um, it looks like he's potentially either going minus Edinburgh or minus North Sea here. Yeah, if only they had taken Mid-Atlantic from Irish here, right? Mm. I guess he didn't want to give an incentive for the uh, Mid-Atlantic Ocean to retreat to North Atlantic. But I don't think that would have been a good move for Italy either way. Um, yeah, Liverpool could have tapped Eddie to stop this as well. Yep. Um, but that didn't happen. Maybe that's agreed upon? Is there a world where that's agreed upon? It's possible, right? no, just see, because... Tapping Norway to make sure none of them do anything too crazy. Um, and this way, Russia can like try to build a fleet Black Sea or something. Yeah, it's possible just because Russia's on 10, Germany's on 14, maybe Russia is going, this is a condition for us continuing to work together. Um, which would explain why the German moved to Ruhr, because it's kind of going, okay, well, if I'm lessing him into Edinburgh, I need to make sure I don't get stabbed too hard if he does stab me. Yeah, uh, it's hard for me to stab too hard when you're in Silesia and Bohemia. <laughs> this is true. That's very fair. Um, That's what I so it's, it's going to be interesting to see whether this, like, fragile truce, I guess, in the north holds out. Um, it's so dirty when it's a truce between a 10-center player and the 14-center player against the 4-center and the 6-center player. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but this is the value of defensible positions. The 4-center the and the 6-center seem to be doing pretty okay. <laughs> Uh, at least on the defensive end. Um, I do like the Western Mediterranean attempting to support Gascony to Spain. Um, I'm not sure how useful that would have been, even if it... <laughs> like, 
that's presumably to stop some kind of self bounce over Spain, but even then it's it's just like Oh no, I see what that's for. That's for uh, if they dislodge Mid Atlantic Ocean like this, um and self bounce Spain and go to Gulf of Leon or something, you can retreat into Brest and you don't get dislodged uh, in the fall. So you get your temporary build. Um but it seemed like a long shot and clearly doesn't work here, I what guess. What would Spain have been order. doing? Sorry? What would Spain have been doing in that move set that you're describing? Uh, going to the Gulf of Leon, I think. Um, which I think is pretty reasonable here. Uh, That's theoretically plausible, and, like, you know that you can't support whole mid-Atlantic Ocean anyways. I mean, whatever, it's fine. Yeah. It's the most... It, it's better than a hold. This is true. Like, if you can do something other than hold that... Uh, if you can throw a support in that does potentially something, it's it's always worth doing. Um, well, uh, so I think we're about wrapped up with uh, stuff to talk about for this phase. So let's go ahead to Fall 1957. And, oh, the, uh, the Constantinople is gone. Two-way fleet. Although, admittedly, the, uh, the the Russian fleet does get into Black Sea, so it's it's still defended, but... Not a problem. Oh, and yes! Yes! The, the German offered the support. The German <laughs> offered Austria support into Venice in the fall. And they took it. And Austria accepted. It's so beautiful. Oh, my God. And Austria, however, gave... Italy con. Yep. Right. So, Italy's not disbanding. And if Italy just supports Hold Venice while Austria rebuilds an army in Trieste, um, I don't think they get broken anytime soon. Yeah, but Italy can't be happy about this, right? <laughs> Italy's I mean, going. Hey, I wanted to build an army in Venice. Why do you have Venice? <laughs> yep. Hey. Wait a minute. This is so dirty by the Austrian, just taking that support and going, okay, well, you're kind of forced to work with me anyway, so I want the build. Um, but I love it. I love it so much. Uh, um, but yeah, so th this is actually a really awkward position for the Italian, because ideally you want to keep this uh, army Tuscany in Tuscany support holding Venice, or push it up to Piedmont, right? But if you do that, the Austrian can then just go Venice to Rome, Trieste to Venice, the next time they want to, whenever the German backs off, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, you're just dead. Sucks to suck. <laughs> um... Which is why this is so pa painful, because, like, if you build Army Venice here, it's such a better position. You're never getting broken. Um, so, yeah, the Austrians done a really, really uh, painful stab here, essentially. That, And you, you're still kind of forced to work with him. Oof. Um... And things don't look great for the Italian on the Iberian front either. Uh, Spain rotating to Marseille, Mid-Atlantic Ocean rotating to Spain. The setup is there for the German to force Leon and start pushing into the Mediterranean. Uh, although he does lose Mid-Atlantic Ocean again. <laughs> it's a question of will Italy ever be able to do anything with that Mid-Atlantic fleet that he keeps getting... Um, yeah, and this time it comes at the cost of getting Fleet Marseille, Fleet Spain. So now there's more fleets potentially breaking into the Med. Yeah, Italy really needed Fleet Naples. And like that's, I think, why it's good for Austria to have this army. Cause if I'm Italy, I don't think I'm building an army of Venice. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think it would have been for my own best interest that there's an army there. Mm. But... Yeah, I mean, the the big advantage usually of taking Mid-Atlantic Ocean in a position like this is just getting the choke point, making sure that the fleets can't come through. But every time Italy has taken that, he's then gotten knocked back out and a fleet has gotten through. So the advantage hasn't really materialized. Um, and this truce between Russia and Germany seems to be holding. Germany could have walked straight into Warsaw here. Instead, he goes to Galicia. 
uh, successfully. Um, <laughs> and he's in Tyrolia now. So heavy southern mo movement from the German. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. I love Trieste Venice. <laughs> I'll talk about that move all day if I if I can, but we we should probably not keep this going for too long. I mean, Italy's going to be in bad shape now. Yep. Playing. Uh, this is not a power rankings year yet, so they've got a year to to get back on top of the Austrian here. But I think if we were doing power rankings this year, Italy would now be below the Austrian. Purely. Yeah, I mean, we did say it, right? We did say explicitly that if Germany would offer Austria support into Venice, then Austria would be higher than Italy on the power rankings. So, like, yep. We got this into our previous power rankings, baby. We did. Uh, and, oh, my God. Yeah, as stated... Uh, sorry, go on. I went on to builds next year. Okay. Well, let's go oh, and have God. a look at the builds here. Uh, fully oh, trust. <laughs> so, just... Well... <laughs> Oh, Austria! Dad I love you so much. For Italy. <laughs> oh man! Okay, so as Italy, you see Venice. You know Austria just getting into Venice here and then building Fleet Trieste. What's your reaction? <laughs> um, if. If people, if nobody solos, I still win the tournament, right? <laughs> I just sit there and take it. Oh, <laughs> oh no. It's just... It oh, God, there's just, there's nothing you can do. And also, like, Aegean is adjacent to Ionia. It should be important to say so. You are subservient, subservient to Austria right now. There is literally nothing you can do. Well, I mean, well, look, so if you were in a different world, right? You can threaten to throw it to Germany. Yes. Right? If we're just playing a game, you just go say, you know what, Austria? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Tuscany supports Piedmont to Venice, Western Mediterranean Sea, Mid Atlantic Ocean, North Atlantic Ocean. Germany, have at it. Come into Western Med, come into Gulf of Leon, let's party. All right? And then, and then we just go. And, like, Germany's going to solo this game every time. But the tournament situation is just, that's not a thing. That is completely unviable because Italy just needs to stop there from being a solo. So now that Austria's in Venice, you just have to say, well, I need to make sure that Russia and Germany don't solo on me. Like, I'm going to die. Okay. I can get eliminated as long as they three-way draw after it. So how can I make the board as stable as possible once I die? Well, we need to have Germany not take Tunis... Which means you right? need to pump up the person who just stabbed you. Yeah, you need Austria to get his ass thing. over to Tunis fast. Oh, that that just hurts. You don't it want feels to do that. Terrible, <laughs> but I also think it's correct. Okay, well, okay. Can I just say first, thank you, Goldfinger, for making this match <laughs> like this. Uh, I mean, this is just added, beautiful. It's added 20 years, at least. <laughs> He's risen up on our blame rankings a bit. It's like, if you want to stalemate Germany here, you build army every time. Fleet is just greedy. There is no reason to have an, a third fleet as Austria here, unless you're you're going, okay, I'm looking for the long game. I want, I want more centers. Um, yeah, and like, I mean, if you need to, if you need... A twenty center solo. You need fleets. Yeah, this like, is true. You just you need them. And if you're over a twenty center solo, then you can't let Italy die either, right? Because if it's a three way, you're never gonna get a twenty center solo in a three way. That's just not gonna happen. Yep. So you need Italy to stay on the board, and you need his fleet mid Atlantic Ocean to go north, right? You need his fleet to start causing annoyance and chaos on the other side of the board, right? Slow down some armies. Maybe let him get Western Med over there too, right? You need Italy to start getting his units to make more mess. Because you need a messy, messy board. But if you're trying it, to... It's not going to happen. If you try to puppet Italy, then f taking stabbing for Venice and then taking Trieste is diplomatically not the way to do it. 
<laughs> diplomatically, no. But if you know that they have to accept it, and they have to deal with whatever you want, and they're just playing to stop a huge solo, then you just tell Italy, look, man, I'll show it up behind you. I'm not going to let them solo. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, well, I mean, also, we didn't talk about this at all, but Burgundy comes off the board. Makes sense. That's like... Yeah, I mean, whatever. I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just Fleet, no, Fleet Trieste really overshadows it. it. This is like yeah. the, the, the big move of the turn, even though it's not a movement turn. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead to the spring of 1958. Um, and... Okay. So yeah. Austria does just walk into the Ionian. Um, the... Italian takes Portugal. What? Okay, what happened there? That was, like, um, that was just good guesses on the Italian part, right? Uh, was it a good guess? Because Portugal gets popped. <laughs> yeah, okay. So it's a bad guess. But, like, you, you were trying to mess around with a Gascony Portugal self bounce here, yeah? And um, pull Portugal into Spain so you can pull your fleet down. But yes. Uh, is there a chance you can hold it? You've got a 50-50 on cutting Spain or Mid-Atlantic Ocean from Western Mediterranean. Uh, That's to... only until they kick you out of Western Med and then... Yeah, but maybe yeah. You, you're thinking, okay, I need the build here. But then, if you need the build, why have you backed out of Constantinople? That's, uh... <laughs> if you need the build, then you should have let Constantinople get popped. Yep. Um... <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a really difficult situation for Italy all around, though. Um, so, not going to say bad things about him just for this. But um, Western Mediterranean probably should have gone back to Tyrrhenian Sea and Mid Atlantic Ocean to Western Med or to North Africa here uh, if he was going to play defensively. Clearly, not wanting to do that. Um, and, you know, maybe he's taking the line that you said, uh, going for. You know, if I'm going to die, I guess I'm going to pump up the Austrians so that this is a three-way. Uh, yeah. Just a stable three-way, let this game end, let me win the tournament. <laughs> yup. Would be a, a kind of interesting way for it to end after the, so many years. But, uh, and, you know, Austria is doing his thing, coming to Ionian, coming into Adriatic, getting ready to take all these Italian dots. And not a lot the Italian can do about it. Uh, Italy just support holding Austria and Venice, making sure that the German can't walk to an easy solo. Um. <laughs> yeah, and like, Russia took Edinburgh, right? That happened last year? Yes. So, in the meantime, like, is there a world where Germany sends too many fleets to the south? And uh -huh. then just lets Russia walk into the Baltic Sea, Gagarak and Rossi or something, and oh, then like... Oh boy. That, he's a potential here, actually, because I don't see where Germany is getting his centers. Um, he's clearly committing for Vienna right now, uh, and his fleets are positioning to get into the Mediterranean, but there's no centers in this immediate space in the Mediterranean. Um, and v Vienna can be hulled. So... This could be the ideal opportunity for Russia just to walk into all of these empty uh, provinces around Germany and go for it. Um, I think you can give it a year, right? Yeah. Because you're going to build in Warsaw this year, right? Yes, because you're getting Constantinople, that's true. Um, and maybe even Bulgaria. And so if you build two, then you can probably punish. Oh boy, does that... Talking. Does that save Italy? Um, because you don't want Austria. To build two. Sorry, hmm. I was just thinking if you build two, it's more obvious what the second build is, what your plan is. And if you only build Warsaw, then you can easily just say, yeah, Warsaw is going to Galicia or whatever hmm. when you walk it into Galicia. Yep. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so you just Army want Liverpool to take Constantinople. Army Liverpool, Army is, Liverpool is very annoying. Is it's a critical unit for this game, actually. Because that really, really messes with Russia's ability to crush Germany in the north. Yep, and I don't think Germany has any incentive to take it out of the United Kingdom anytime soon. 
Um, yeah, and he's just going to start tapping Edinburgh with it each turn so that you can't support Norway in the North Sea. Yep. And that's... Uh, although he really should be doing that already, and he's not. Um, so maybe he won't. Yeah, but he will be in the future, I'm almost <laughs> certain. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so I, I think you, you were right, though. This is a dangerous position for Germany up here. Uh, it might be a year before he realizes it, but... The Russian could well just walk into all of these empty provinces, and despite them not being supply centers, they are very important provinces. Um, so, yeah, there's not really that much more to talk about here. The German's just doing his thing, positioning around the south, not really taking much, and the Russian's biding a, his time. I think a surprisingly big move is Serbia and Trieste. Yes. Oh yeah, because the Austrian's supposed to be at war with the Russian right now. Um, I think the Austrian is kind of betting on the Russian not wanting the German to make gains uh, in Vienna. And that seems like a reasonable bet. Uh, I don't think I would want the the German to make any gains as the Russian here. Yeah, and I'm already building one as Russia. I don't need to walk into Serbia. Yep. So. And I don't need to, t I certainly don't need to tap Budapest, uh, which is probably what the German is asking him to do. Um, but yes, uh, so Serbia to Trieste makes sense. It's there to hold Vienna, and it, it will. Um, shall we go ahead to the fall? Let's yeah, let's do it. Go. Let's see how this goes. Okay. Ionian to Tyrrhenian. Okay. Um, and the Italian actually moves uh, Tuscany to Rome here, so he is making sure that the Austrian can't just walk into Rome and Naples at the same time here. Um, although, part of that will also have to do with the fact that Adriatic can now support Venice, so he's not really needed. Um, so, uh, also, the Italian guesses wrong on Portugal, gets his unit blown up. Um, there was no guess, because Leon was cutting Western Med. Uh, Western Med could have gone to Mid-Atlantic Ocean and cut the support uh, to Portugal. Oh, I'm an idiot. Um, of course you're right. Of course, of course. But, yes. I, uh, it couldn't support Portugal into Spain, which what I was assuming would have been the, the move, but no, you're definitely right. Yeah, but ultimately that wouldn't have changed a lot here, I think, um, because... You know, the you're losing Constantinople anyway. Uh, if you take Portugal, all you're doing is maintaining the Portugal unit. Um, as is, you lose Portugal, you lose the Portugal unit. Uh, and you're still just on these three relevant units in Aegean, Tuscany, and... Well, not Tuscany anymore, in Rome and Western Mediterranean. Uh, so, yeah. Um, the Italian is in a... An interesting spot here, and he's now been kind of completely puppeted by the Austrian with this move through to Tyrrhenian Sea. The Austrian can kind of just collapse in on him and murder him as soon as he wants to, but he doesn't kind seem to. Of, but he also can't. Um, if he tries to do that, I think he just dies, right? I, I don't think he can actually take the Italian units because he needs the armies in their position, and he needs that fleet in Western Med and fleet in Aegean. That's true, actually, right. yeah. Aegean needs to be support holding Bulgaria for Austria to hold Bulgaria. Um, and Western Mediterranean doesn't really, but the uh, army Rome, if he pulls Venice down to take Rome, then he probably loses Venice to the German. And as soon as he loses Venice, he's gonna lose Vienna. Yep. Right, it's the beauty of these stalemate lines that are held together with spit and the minimum number of units. And, like, it's not even technically a stalemate, because Russia can take Bulgaria, but even just against Germany, right, you need all these units, so... Yep. This is, like, the stalemate of a 4 center power and now a 7 center power against the 10 and the 13. Really, all you're trying to do is hold on long enough for them to start attacking each other. And if we yeah. look to the north... <laughs> They did it. They did. Congratulations. And Here, Liverpool not cutting Eddie. Just crippling. Such a huge deal. 
Yes, and th there's really no reason why you shouldn't tap Edinburgh here. You should always be tapping Edinburgh. It doesn't make sense not to. You could just say, hey, let's bounce an OC with strength 2, and then you support yourself in an OC with strength 2, and then it's fine. Yep. Right? It's a more optimal bounce agreement, because then neither person can stab the other, because they both want to attack with strength 2. It's just... This is very dangerous for Germany, because this... Russian fleet in Baltic Sea, Russian fleet in North Sea, while there's still an army in Sweden, like, Denmark's guaranteed to go. And it's unclear what happens to the German mainland once Denmark is gone. Yeah, and there's no German builds, right? There's a, Germany has yeah. no, nothing to gain, as we were talking about last phase. Even, like, they did screw up their support on uh, Tyrolia to... Vienna, it looks like they tried to support Galicia into Vienna at the same time, but even if they had, it's like yeah, Austria had those three supports, they were going to hold that as long as they wanted to, and these are, these German units are just completely out of position now, the Russia is surrounding their homeland and they're all down south uh, <laughs> Yeah, Mid-Atlantic Ocean is barely in time to help defend but Gulf of Leon is not Army Portugal is not particularly useful. Gascony feels bad. Tuscany, when you're just trying to defend Berlin? What a joke. Yep. This is just going to be really difficult to pull back in time. Um, really, the one benefit you've got is Army Liverpool. <laughs> but you just forgot to make the right move on that. That, that could have changed so much. Um, but yeah... Uh, this is going to be an interesting situation for the Germans. Suddenly, they've dropped a lot in their power here, I think, uh, with that one move into Baltic and the other move into North Sea. Uh, yeah, if they bounce Russia out of North Sea, right, we're in just a whole other world. Because that buys them a significant amount of time. Right. Yep. So, but they don't have that time, so... <laughs> yep. Um, so, I mean, is there anything to talk about right now, or should we just move on to builds and power rankings? Let's see where Russia builds. I'm assuming it's going to be Fleet St. Pete North Coast, but I have no idea. Could be, maybe it's Fleet South Coast, that'd be astounded. Okay, well, I, I just moved ahead to the builds. <laughs> Sorry yeah, okay. about that. And you were yeah, absolutely yeah. correct. It's Fleet North St. Petersburg North Coast. Um... And, yeah, makes sense. Slide it into Norway, bring it down to Skagerrak, uh, and pressure that German homeland even more. Um, this looks like it could potentially be very painful for the German. And, like, Russia's not even in a bad position in the south. These German units are so entangled. Uh, and Russia's got Constantinople, Smyrna, Black Sea, Romania. They can push Bulgaria still and hold on to everything they have. This uh, this is starting to look very good for them. Yep, they just still have the natural issue where there is no stalemate line for them. So, if Italy and Austria get their act together and get their fleets over to Eastern Med, Germany pulls out of Iberia, and then they start taking Romania, Russia can still collapse on himself while Germany pushes him back in the north. So, it's just so hard for Russia's position to be safer than Germany's from here. But if he just kills Germany, he doesn't need a stalemate line, right? If he's just the biggest. This is true. Um, so in terms of power rankings, would you put Russia above Germany here or not? I feel yeah. like, they're, yeah, there is a very good argument just purely based on Army Portugal, Army Tuscany, Fleet Marseille, Fleet Lyon, and I mean, they're all I mean, completely I mean, out of very, position. I have a simpler way to phrase it. So, currently, Russia is down two supply centers from Germany, right? Yep. Russia is going to take one supply center from Germany, that's Denmark, which will put them both at 12, and then Russia can take her Bulgaria whenever Russia wants, putting Russia at 13 and Germany at 12. Russia's at more supply centers, Russia's higher in the power rate. <laughs> okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, Russia is also closer to a solo victory, I would say, in this position. Um... Yeah, because Germany just sent too many fleets to the south, baby. Yep, it's exactly what you predicted with the... Uh... Gotta, gotta shut the door on St. Pete before you do this. 
Okay, and you know, down at the bottom of our power rankings, we had Italy, then Austria. I think with the move into Venice, that's very clearly switched around. Yeah, yeah. Right. as we said last this year, is, uh... when as soon as we saw the support happen, we knew that it changed. Yep, and so a, a pretty good move by the Austrian brings him into third place. Okay, what's kind of hilarious though is it's still easier to eliminate Austria than it is to eliminate Turkey, or excuse uh, me, to eliminate Italy. <laughs> or, you think that so? is still true. I don't know, because I think these uh, southern um, German units are going to come off or run away, and then Austria can just walk into the Italian centers whenever they want to. Well, right? I'm not sure that's true, right? Because Aegean's going to go back to Ionian, right? If Aegean's trying to defend. Yeah, I guess if that's... If gets into Tunis, like... <laughs> Look, these are th annoying three centers to pop, all right? Yeah. That's that's fair. Um, I think it is pretty clear that Austria is at least ahead of Italy on the power rankings. So yes. They are Austria's more powerful. Ahead of Italy. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, this is the, the Italian position is a lot less bad than it looks. It's still pretty bad, but the Austrian probably won't eliminate them here. This is the important thing to consider. Um, yes. So let's move ahead into. So, yes, our power rankings are Russia first, now Germany second, Austria in third, and Italy in fourth. Let's move ahead to the spring of 1959. switch, right? First went to second, and third went to fourth. Yep. That's pretty much. I feel like there's a link there that we can look into later. Definitely. I mean, maybe we should make a retrospective video at the end, although I don't really feel like watching it, but, like listening to my voice for however long it takes to do this. Um, I don't really want to rewatch all these afterwards. Uh, but yes. Well, we can figure out a way to consolidate the power rankings and just put them in together and put them in an Excel sheet and then figure it out. Yeah, that's fair. Um, all right. So... These, uh, I think actually a viewer said that they were already doing that, so... <laughs> well, if that viewer shares the Google Sheet with us, then we can we can do it more easily and look at it. Or we can let that viewer do it and let them... <laughs> that would be awesome. Channel. But yes, but anyway, we have moved into spring of 1959, and at possibly the worst possible time, German NMR. Is it 13 centers? Is that the number that you're at when you NMR? <laughs> because I feel like a 13 center power is NMR to like a bunch. It does seem that way. Like seriously, there are there have been a lot of 13 center NMRs. I mean, not exclusively. Yeah, there, there was an Austrian NMR on like five. There's been quite a few NMRs that weren't at 13, but it's plausible that every time a power has reached 13, they have NMR shortly after. <laughs> you, yeah. I mean, that's a pattern to investigate. Um, yeah, 13 is an unlucky number, man. And, I mean, Russia perfectly taking advantage of it with this convoy into Kiel. It's like, that's ballsy. That's the kind of move you do because you think there's going to be an NMR, right? <laughs> I mean, yes, but also if you think that Helgeland Bart's going to support Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, then your normal way would be... well. I, I feel like there's Heligland no way Bight. Heligoland Bight supports Denmark because Heligoland Bight knows that it's probably going to be cut, right? <laughs> so it does something else. But yeah, the, I've next leveled some people before where you just you know this unit can be cut so they know that you're not going to do it so they do something else so you do it and then that's you true. beat them. But like, if you're going for this mega convoy, Berlin is completely open. You didn't need to showboat going into is kill. not possible to stop. Makes it a little better. But at the same time, if you knew he was NMRing, then you're not going to bounce Galicia. You're just going to walk into Silesia. And then you can still walk into Berlin, right? Yeah. And then Germany's actually pretty cooked, because he's, he's going minus three, losing Kiel, Berlin, and Denmark this year. Yep. Just... Uh, so maybe this was just a guess that uh, Heligoland Bight would support whole Denmark, but yes, it was a fantastic thing. It looks like it was a change last minute because the North Sea tried to support Sweden into Denmark here. Um, so clearly he sure. had that entered at some point, and then oh, God, I didn't even know. Yeah, if you know if they're NMR, you can just move North Sea to Holland, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Germany goes minus four. <laughs> yep. Oh, that seems okay. 
so, well, they, they go for this convoy into Kiel, it pays off, and suddenly Germany's got to be feeling the heat now. <laughs> They've got a, a Russian unit in the middle of their homeland, and there's no way they can deal with that. Uh, they house. pull everything back. Um, yeah. And even then it can just retreat to Holland. It's... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Kiel's an awkward place for a Russian army to be, if you're Germany. Yep. Uh, that's an understatement. Speaking of which, has Kiel been taken? Yes, Kiel was taken by the French a long time ago. Yes, yes, uh, yes. for sure. Um, I think every province on the map has been taken. Yeah, that's, that's what we discussed last time. I did. just was sure that I, I was pretty sure we were right. But then I realized that Germany was down to one, and it's plausible that Germany was down to Kiel only. But I think I don't believe that ever Germany's happened. never been down to one. They were, I think, at three minimum. But uh... well, I thought Germany got like knocked back down. They were Whatever, down to man. one home center at one point, but they did have, like, Edinburgh and, and Moscow or something stupid I, at the same time. So yeah, there was a time where they had Edinburgh, Moscow, and, like, Berlin, but then I thought they lost Edinburgh and Moscow and still just had Berlin because Austria was in Munich and, and then was supported to Kiel or something, right? Yeah. I thought there was, a, uh -huh. there was a position like that for a turn, but then they managed to walk their way back into Berlin or something. I think this is in, like, the 20s. I don't think they were but... ever at one. This is, I believe you. If you, uh, if you yeah. don't think they were at one, then I, I trust you. But yes, they were certainly in a dire position at some point with, like, not many home supply centers. But um, from human right, Germany's just got to say, well, I wish I did an NMR, because if Mid-Atlantic Ocean to North Atlantic Ocean, if, if we're pulling out of the South, getting our units into position, we have a chance. Yep. Right? Maybe Mid-Atlantic Ocean just convoys Portugal over to Belgium with English Channel. Right, that's plausible. Yeah, but then right? that, that's then just even, to Burgundy. That's even more painful because you need to be pulling those fleets to like London and English Channel at the moment to get position on North Sea. Or to Belgium and English Channel, just something that yeah. will help defend. So it's plausible. I think the argument for the convoy would be that Denmark's already lost, right? The yeah. Agreement. And so because Denmark has already lost, then the next thing that you're worried about for... The, for the North Sea are the lowlands, Belgium and Holland, and if you can get into Belgium and Burgundy, suddenly you're okay. Um, you're still pulling Gulf of Lyon back into Spain's south coast, so you're not actually slowing down the speed at which your southern fleets make it out, right? I think I think that's a yeah. reasonable move to make, and then you get if you get an army into Ruhr and Burgundy, you're feeling pretty okay about your homeland. Um, that makes but, sense. And I mean, that would have been really good if there's an army in Kiel, right? You'd feel really smart. But, it, it, I mean, it has the downside of you just getting bounced in Belgium and then your three units have done nothing. Yes. My feeling is that Portugal is a unit that's going to be difficult to get out, right? Because you need to move Gulf of Leon to Spain, and then Spain's going to the Mid-Atlantic Ocean, and then Marseille's going into Spain, and then Spain's going to the Mid-Atlantic Ocean again. And so you're going to have to have Portugal hold for a year if you don't convoy it out. Yep. Which is why my instinct would be convoy it out, get it out of the place. You p might not take North Sea this turn. Um, you might take North Sea, and if you don't take North Sea, then it kind of sucks. So maybe you just convoy it to Brest, or convoy to Gascony or something. Um, with Mid-Atlantic Ocean, while English Channel messes with North Sea, but whatever. I would expect to see the convoy happen. That makes Instead, sense. Instead, he had Mars. The only one who does anything is Russia, who gets a very good turn on Germany. Yep, and actually there is one other move here that is quite yeah, interesting to, to me. Naples. Rome to Naples, what? <laughs> I, I, I know, guess man. it's because they thought Tyrrhenian Sea might be going to Naples? Uh... Well, it's more fun to move into centers, right? You're not supposed to have your units hold, and so Rome is now <laughs> moving, and then it's going to move again. And I like having my units move. <laughs> okay, sure. This did, like, open up Rome to a potential move of Tuscany to Rome, which uh, admittedly is fairly Naples unlikely. back into Rome. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's probably so unthinkable that the Italian would do this that it doesn't matter that the Italian did it, because no one was going to go into Rome anyway. Um, which actually makes fun. sense. Yeah. <laughs> but then now he needs to move back up into Rome again, uh, which I'm sure he'll get support to do, so that's fine. Um, the the Russian does make progress against the German, should be noted he went in from Romania, so uh, he is basically showing non-aggression towards the Austrian here. He's demilitarizing this front a little bit, not a ton, yes. but enough. Well, it's a significant 
demilitarization because fleet Ro so first of all fleet romania can't walk into serbia yep right as many people have discovered to their chagrin as <laughs> russia and second of all now there is only two units on bulgaria so aegean support hold bulgaria as long as there's a fleet in the black sea russia can make no progress against austria yep Right, this has successfully stopped it. Now, again, it's as long as Ukraine walks back into Romania and Romania goes to Black Sea, the whole thing is up in smoke again. But as long as this is the setup, this it, this is a stalemate. Yeah, uh, this and this makes Austria very happy. Um, which I wonder what the Russian is trying to convince the Austrian to do here. I guess just saying, you know, uh, I'll go kill the German. You can hold here and not attack me, and we'll all be happy. Um, which, yeah, I feel like as the Austrian, I'd be inclined to turn around anyway and just, uh, just yeah, try I mean, and push. Yeah, I mean, the pitch is, oh my god, Germany's at 13 centers. We gotta stop Germany from soloing, guys. But... Attack Germany with me. Let's attack Germany. <laughs> and then hope that they don't realize that you're at 11 centers. <laughs> yes, but seeing army, uh, Russian army in Kiel, I think, uh, changes that oh, equation wait. significantly. But this was last turn, right? He didn't know he was gonna get into Kiel. That's true. <laughs> but now... I think it's in the Austrian's interest to turn around. Now he's going to say, um, hey, Austria, uh, how about you don't take... He mean, Austria can't take Romania, right? Austria mm. needs to, like, get into Serbia and then get... Man, flee Bulgaria, south coast. Ugh. <laughs> yep. It would be better as an army. Um, but, yeah, I, yeah. I think maybe Austria's best play is just move Budapest down to Serbia and take Tunis. Um, just walk in there, get a build, and then uh, hopefully ask the Italian to, to take Western Mediterranean off and, and offer them support into Constantinople, something like that. Um, which probably doesn't go, but hey. You, um... Yeah, maybe you do something like Adriatic to Ionian. You tell Russia, hey, I'm going to be pushing this unit to the west, because that's where we got to go. But then it goes into Eastern Med. Yeah, that makes sense. And then you prepare for... <laughs> you convoy the Italian army over. Maybe that's why it's gone to Naples. Yeah, I mean, I would have assumed you can wait until Germany disbands Tuscany. Because I would yep. assume Tuscany is going to be at the German disband. For sure. Um, so, like, you can wait on this until that move has happened. But as is, doesn't really matter, like... Yep. No one's going to solo this one anytime. Right? Russia's not going to get into soloing position while Germany has so many fleets and units ready to defend. Like, okay, if Germany NMRs again, okay, I think Russia's going to solo, but, like, don't <laughs> NMR again, Germany. Yep. Please and thank gotta, you. Gotta hope. Uh, shall we go ahead to the fall here? Let's do it. All right. Fall 1959. No German NMR. Nice to see. Um... Tuscany gets convoyed out, and it looks like the Austrian doesn't... Well, what? <laughs> okay, so they move back to the Ionian, but not with the unit you would normally think. Also, the Italian annoying us with this giant useless move arrow <laughs> from Naples to Norway. <laughs> it's across the entire map. So it should be noted that on web diplomacy you can only enter valid orders. That includes valid convoy orders. So in order to enter a move like this, there has to be a valid chain. And the reason that is a valid move here is that there were fleets everywhere from Tyrrhenian Sea, West Mediterranean, Mid-Atlantic Ocean, English Channel, North Sea. So he's just showing off how far his fleet, his army could possibly get. Um, but yes, the Austrian pulls back, the Italian pulls back, the Germans pulling back off this front. Uh, you were right about a convoy, but not all the way to Belgium. It's just across the Mid-Atlantic Ocean, which I think is yeah, fair. Yeah, this lets English Channel cover London. Yep. Which um, is fine. And, you know, that makes it more likely you can pull your Mid-Atlantic Ocean fleet out next turn and make sure it doesn't bottleneck all of your other fleets. Um, yeah. What makes me kind of sad is that Russia played this in a way where Russia was guaranteed to keep Kiel, but Russia was also guaranteed to not get another center. Right. It was yeah. impossible for Russia to go plus two with these movesets. Yeah. See, they could have they could have supported their move into Denmark, and then they would have lost Kiel, but they could have retreated into Holland and got the plus two. Um, or they could have supported, they could have tried to take Berlin or whatever, right? They could have 
gone for the centers and tried to go plus two. But mm. instead, they just said, yeah, I'm guaranteed to go plus one. But, like, I think that was a little bit short-sighted. I think they were basically guaranteed to go I think plus yeah, one. They, they had a guaranteed plus two here if they just do Kiel support Baltic to Denmark, North Sea support Baltic to Denmark. Because if the only way that... Well, there, there isn't a way that doesn't take Denmark. And... If you English get the search from Kiel, North you sea, right? always get Holland, right? If English Channel cuts North Sea. Oh, English Channel, yeah, 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 okay. That's so you have to support North Sea into Denmark? Uh, yeah, but if you go that way, then it then it's guaranteed to work, yeah. Yeah, then it's guaranteed to work, and then if they kick you out of Kiel, they need to use Helgeland, and their point is that then Kiel can retreat into Holland, because there's the only two adjacent in Kiel, and Helgeland could not then cover Holland. Yeah, so defending Kiel was a complete waste of time. Yes, but this feels like positioning over centers. It's Russia saying, okay, it's more important for me to be in Kiel than it is for me to go up more centers. Um, but it's not. I think Denmark is more important. <laughs> right? It is. You should support it in from the Baltic Sea, right? Have North Sea support Baltic Sea to Denmark. But you're actually really happy if you get to retreat into Holland as, as Russia because you're in Holland now, right? That's an annoying place to, to pop. Yep. Right? You can tap Kiel, so when you've got your stuff bordering Berlin, you're in great shape. Like, Denmark would have been popped, it would have been disbanded off the board if you take Denmark, which is a huge advantage. Not the way that they ordered it, right? Because by supporting Denmark into Kiel, they're not actually popping it. But, like, the upside on popping Denmark is crazy. I would have, have been super tempted to... Like, he should have gone after Denmark in some way, or Berlin, or whatever. Right? He should have tried to go... Yeah. To go plus two, but... I mean, importantly, if if he had ordered Kiel support Baltic to Denmark here, even with the exact same movesets, yes, uh, Germany would have gotten their unit back into Munich, which is bad, I suppose, but also you're not threatening Munich that soon, so it doesn't matter that much. But you would also keep Kiel and take and pop Denmark. Um, so that that's huge. <laughs> yeah, you would control the north and you'd keep Kiel. Um also, yeah, like, I, I, guess, though, we right? did, I, I do want to very quickly say we did get a comment the other day saying, uh, please tell this man it's pronounced Kiel and not Kiel. Um, but I don't think I'm ever going to remember to say that right. <laughs> I apologize. Oh, I mean, you're British and I'm an American. Two countries that are not known for their good pronunciation <laughs> of foreign true. words. Yes, um, it hurts me inside every time I hear so, you say Edinburgh. Um, <laughs> instead of Edinburgh? Yes. <laughs> or just yeah, Edinburgh. Yeah. It's like, hey, look, man, how about I just say Eddie always and then you move on with our lives? <laughs> yeah, but then you but think so, you're talking about the player, uh, Eddie Bess. <laughs> yeah, of course, but that makes it kind of funny. Uh, but yes, uh, so yeah, this is just so pronunciation it's problems. It's just Kiel, apparently, not Kiel. Kiel? Like the um, boat part? Yes. The keel of the boat? Exactly. Isn't that K-E-E-L? Yes. There's uh, an I in this. <laughs> okay, so I should say, <laughs> this is just from a YouTube comment. I haven't actually verified that it's the way that the province is pronounced. Um, <laughs> but I assume that our, our commentators are, well, our commenters are... Uh, know what they're talking about with All regards right, well, to just so clear, when i googled how to pronounce kiel um with the i the google pronunciation was k-e-e-l so <laughs> okay yeah okay uh, city in germany well i, I mostly trust google i remember uh, hearing max vex talk about uh russian provinces because he, he's a player i played in nexus with um who is uh -huh. ukrainian i believe uh, and said it was pronounced Se Sevastopol, the um, the southern center, not Sevastopol. Sevastopol. Yeah, Se Sevastopol. Um, Sevastopol. Which I try to remember every time and never no, it's say. Sevastopol. <laughs> so, yes. Sorry, man. Like, I love you guys, and I respect all of these people, but, like, anyone who's offended by me calling it Sevastopol, I, I am sorry to you. Please explain why I am ruining your culture or whatever but yeah i think at this point it's just like we, we're well aware that we're terrible at pronunciation it's just because we're english speakers and uh, well as a first language and english speakers tend to be really really bad at, at any other language yeah so 
Yes, anyway, we've gone uh, way off topic here. The Russian is keeping kill. <laughs> kill. Um, yes. And I've completely forgotten what we were talking about when... Uh, uh, we were talking about how Russia didn't need to try to defend it because yes. they were going to retreat into Holland if Russia, if Germany took it back. But we kind uh, of talked that out, right? <laughs> I think we explained that in detail. Okay. But yeah, we just see good defensive units from moves from Germany, pulling everything up to the north, getting back to defend. Yes. Uh, and we see something interesting. And, sorry? Sorry. It's something interesting from the Austrian down here is pulling Venice up to Tyrolia with the fleet backfilling into Venice. Fleet Venice obviously always hurts me inside, but here I think yeah. it's it's reasonable if you're pulling that unit up. Um, yep, and like you're getting, you're using Tyrrhenian Sea to get to Eastern Med, so you don't actually need it. Yeah, this is true. Uh, and as Austria, I kind of want to let the Italian unit through and take Eastern Med instead, so that I can keep my how level you of control. How yeah. do you make that happen, man? I it, don't know. It's kind of difficult. Um, but oh, yeah. God, we're gonna have some Turk on here and tell us that Smyrna is Smyrna or whatever. <laughs> I think we've got Smyrna right. Come on. Are they going to get pissed about it being Constantinople, not Istanbul? Like, <laughs> Okay, I mean, like, yeah. It, to be honest, I'm thinking probably the, the, the provinces we pronounce wrong the most are probably things like Marseille or... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> like, I think, I think I heard that Trieste is pronounced Trieste at some point, but I'm just, like, uh, Trieste, there's an R at the end? I think so. <laughs> Look, okay, so actually, if, if anyone is interested in this, there was a diplomacy briefing episode where someone went through and pronounced every single, uh, province in the local dialect, um, which is an interesting lesson. Uh, but also something you forget 30 seconds afterwards, and therefore <laughs> we'll never be able to commentate it that way. <laughs> and, like, if we're doing it in local accent, then Venice should probably be Venezia or something like that. Naples should be Napoli, so these aren't obviously aren't supposed to be entirely... Uh... <laughs> it's written because of... When did diplomacy... When, did the... when was the game written? Um, because I feel like it was designed before <laughs> before we cared about not being imperialist. This is probably true. It was, it was 1959, <laughs> so, I think. Um, so, like, yeah. Also, it was probably just designed with English speakers in mind. Um, like, Venice and Rome and stuff are easier for an English speaker to remember than Venezia and, and Roma and, and Napoli. Well, it would help if they, if they wrote Venezia phonetically rather than just Venice, then it's sure. But, like, we also call it Paris, not Paris or whatever. Paris, like, yeah. Paris. <laughs> uh, so, whatever. Yeah. I, I think also uh, I read of th this is going way off topic. Sorry, people aren't here to hear us rambling. But I read what quite do you recently. Mean? They're definitely here to hear us rambling. <laughs> That's like eighty percent of these videos, anyways. <laughs> this is true. I heard recently that the French edition of the game, one of the more recent ones, they consulted a bunch of French diplomacy players, and basically the French diplomacy players have been so irritated by all of these places being named in the English way. Uh, that they renamed random provinces to other things that just they just decided on. So Sevastopol is now called Odessa in the French version, um, because it's another city in this region uh, <laughs> that's just not the same as the one that the English board has. Um, and the Irish Sea is something like St. George's Crossing or something? I don't know. It's uh, They renamed a whole bunch of provinces just out of spite, which I think is amazing and, and very French. <laughs> Uh, but I, yes. I'm good for the French. This is the last phase, right? We've talked about this phase no. at nausea, and we can go to the final build. No, no, no. We've life. got we've got another year to go. What? <laughs> this is 59. We go through the, oh uh, the, the zeros as well. Um, we have to look at the build of 59. Okay, so first off, uh, uh. these 
Then there's a few support holds around Bulgaria that we should mention. Come on. Everyone's We're trying to. <laughs> Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> okay. Everyone everyone is being friendly with the Austrian. Let's move ahead to the winter so we don't <laughs> make no its fully explode. Wait. Congratulations. Okay. Fleet. <laughs> Fleet Gulf of Leon comes off. Uh, I think that okay. makes sense. It's really hard to get all of those fleets back, although it's gotta hurt to disband one of your fleets here. Um, eh. Piedmont was the other one. Piedmont? Yeah. I, I, that's another province I don't know how to pronounce. <laughs> okay, no, I won't talk about that. But see, Piedmont orders Tyrolia. And Tyrolia is a good place, I hear. Yeah, that's so true. Piedmont makes it back to Berlin in like three moves, right? Tyrolia, Munich, Berlin. As Gulf long of as Leon Austria makes it back to through. Berlin, like one, two, three, four, five, six moves or something. So, yep, I would expect that Austria slides Trieste down to Serbia and then Tyrolia down to Trieste. Maybe lets the German through here. Um, I would expect them to go up into Bohemia. Uh, yeah, that's another option. Gotta Just spread like spread your wings. Yep, actually, that makes more sense. Uh, force Tyrolia up to Bohemia and. Trieste down to Serbia and just get that. Oh, you don't want position. to do a forced retreat. You don't want to see where Russia goes and then move Bohemia in response to that. That's not your thinking, Captain Me. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked that you didn't instantly see the forward retreat opportunity. Oh um, man, this is this is because I spent too much time talking about uh, pronunciation instead of actually looking at moves. Okay, so um, the Fleet Saint <laughs> Petersburg North Coast is the other build. Uh, which, I mean, it's a very fleet-heavy Russia, five northern fleets, but it makes sense, given what he's trying to do, uh, push in on the north. It may cost him in the south if uh, Austria does what we think Austria is going to do and immediately turns around and goes for him. <laughs> like, Army Sevastopol feels like it would have been better here. Then Fleet St. Pete North Coast? Defensive wise, yeah, but uh, like if yeah. he's pushing, if he's pushing to take Germany, he might as well go fleet St. Pete North Coast and try and take, uh, try and take Germany as fast as possible. Um, yeah, and I mean, just generally speaking, fleet St. Pete North Coast is not a defensive build, right? It is a yep. very aggressive, forward thinking build. Yep, absolutely. Uh, it's gonna wrap around Norway and then. Probably go to Skagerrak, or it could even go Norwegian to the North Atlantic, but I don't think that's particularly like likely here. Um, yeah, it's a little late for that. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's about everything as far as these builds go. Uh, let's go ahead into the spring. Spring of 1960. Hmm, these Austrian units... The Austrian move surprised me. Uh, Vienna going into Bohemia instead of... Uh, instead of Tyrolia going into Bohemia. He's staying with the Russian. Yeah, this is much more anti-German. And Like, does that make sense? That feels like it's enabling Russia right now. Russia is the big power on this board. He's the big threat. But maybe Austria wants that shake-up to happen. It's probably okay, right? Yeah. What if, if Russia builds another fleet, do you really care? Probably not, as long as they do make sure that it's a fleet. Um, and Austria also, I do like that, I really like the Ionian to Greece, letting the Italian go through to Eastern Mediterranean and presumably pop, being able to pop out into the Ionian behind him. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I'm in Italy, you just don't do that. <laughs> this is true. You just don't. You um, just say thanks. You left Ionia willingly. Congratulations. You may stay in Greece. Yeah, that's. I'll move Aegean to Eastern Med, and then you can move Greece into Aegean. <laughs> that's fine. But I'm an Ionian. What you gonna do now, big guy? <laughs> What's... Yep. And then you immediately see the the Austrian pull Venice down to Apulia and go. Well, yeah, but Venice now. is a fleet. Venice ain't an army. It's not walking into Rome. Mm. Like, well, yeah. the army can get down behind it, but yes, uh, it would take a little while of maneuvering for Austria to do that. Um, 
But I think there is a potential chance that Italy does bite and go into the Eastern Mediterranean just to try and take these Russian dots, because they are open. They're accessible if you can... Uh, if you can bring three units against them here, Bulgaria, Egeanius, and Med. Um, but, yeah, it does... There's a significant amount of risk behind it. <laughs> uh, and as Italy, you've kind of stabilized. It's it's an odd stabilizing position, but this fleet is not going to do anything, uh, Fleet Venice, to you. Um, fleet Venice sucks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Almost as bad as Fleet Prussia. <laughs> no one likes Fleet Venice. Get these fleets out of Venice. There's been too many Fleet Venices this game. <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, German Front on the north. Um, seems pretty reasonable as a defense. Yeah, very much pure defensive moves. Um, doing his best to keep units alive, but... I mean, something's going to get popped. But he stopped Bohemia from getting popped, which is which is pretty important. Yep. Um, obviously, not ideal that he's got the Austrian against him. That's failure in uh, in diplom on the diplomatic front. I, I mean, the Austrian could take Munich. <laughs> Maybe that's... I mean, that's probably what he's intending to gain here. Um, which would be hilarious. Uh, but... The way that the German has brought it back, it's it's possible that he manages to save that. Um, and, yeah, everything else just going super defensive, bringing these fleets back north. Marseille to Spain is odd, um, to say the least. It probably should have That's gone to Gascony. Gascony. Yeah. Maybe, but you could just leave an army in Portugal, right? You'd rather have a fleet there, but yeah, be okay. It's just like as a as a measure in in case Italy does send this fleet to the west, I guess. Um, yeah, this but... makes me think that you probably should have disbanded Piedmont, right? Because they could have kept Gulf of Leon, and if they're going to have an army in Spain slash Portugal, they would rather that unit be a fleet. Yep. So them keeping Marseille would make and disbanding Leon made me think Marseille was going north. So it's a little bit, it's a little odd. Maybe they thought they were going to have Austria on side previously when they disbanded Leon. Um, but that makes no, sense. I mean, from the position, I would have thought that Austria would be on side, but Austria is not being bound by people's expectations here. <laughs> it's very much doing his own thing. Um, and Russian moves in the north make total sense here. Cut Heligoland, bite, cut Berlin, make sure nothing can take Kiel here. Um, and cut Denmark. Like, this is the defense by a thousand cuts measure if you cut everything then any attack can only have one strength, so it can't be taken. Plus, you force Denmark in the process, um, make sure that unit gets blown up. And... Yes, and that was a guaranteed pop of Denmark. Yep. And St. Petersburg coming to Norway can now backfill North Sea, or attempt to, probably won't be able to because uh, Liverpool has gone to Clyde and can now cut Eddie. It could cut Eddie anyway, I suppose. Um, but in addition, there's now three... German fleets adjacent to the North Sea. Uh, so, Russia is not uh, going to... I believe to... four, right? Norway, Helgeland, Blight, Denmark, Norway? Uh... Eddie, Helgeland, Blight, Denmark, oh, Norway. Four. Yeah, sorry, there's four There's four Russian fleets adjacent. There's three German ones, so he can contest. This is true. Um, and, I mean, the it's probably just going to be a bounce because Edinburgh is going to get cut. Uh, and you don't really want to yeah. lose Edinburgh. Um, but yes, a bounce is good enough for Russia right now. They just want to uh, b keep that clear while they're taking the German HSCs. Yeah, and they take... They got Denmark and they're going to take Berlin. Yep. And if they support Austria into Munich, um, then there's a chance. Berlin needs to cut Silesia then, so that Germany doesn't lose Munich as well. Yeah. Well, that's... I mean, as Germany... I guess as Germany, you kind of want just Russia to be taking your census, because that makes it more likely that Austria will turn on Russia. Um, yeah, so... if Austria gets a build, then Austria can probably say, well, this is good, we can keep Munich, and we can just stop Russia for... we can stop Russia next year. Whereas if 
Austria gets nothing, they might need to attack Russia immediately. Yep. And then you still have, you've hung on to Munich. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, shall we have a look at the fall here then? Let's do it. Okay, fall 1960. They do hang on to Munich, uh, but they lose Holland in the process, and and they lose Berlin and Denmark, and Russia gets the fleet into Kiel behind it. Oh my God, that's a painful year for the German. Yeah, it makes this convoy into Belgium um, look like it would have been in the middle of better, eh? Yeah, I mean, they should have just... They, they should have just done it here anyway, right? Um, well, no, it doesn't Holland? really matter. Right, I didn't even realize, but Holland was a guaranteed capture. Yeah, man. And, and like, then they don't Kiel even... would have... Well, the only way to defend Kiel was... There was no way to defend Kiel. Because Holland is guaranteed um, dislodged, you can't support anything into Kiel. Right? So you needed Munich to cut Silesia, and then Burgundy supports Berlin into Munich. There's the only way to not lose Berlin this turn, but like, come on. Who's doing that? Yeah. Any... yeah. You have to guess between the Russians supporting the Austrian into Munich or the Russians supporting themselves into Berlin, and the uh, the German guessed wrong here. Um, and yeah, this, uh, this convoy up, he used two units to convoy Spain to Picardy, uh, I feel like you should have just used the one to convoy it up to Brest, or just moved it to Gascony last turn, which is like the the much better way to do this. Um, if if it had moved to Gascony right last turn, then this turn would have moved to Paris, so it would have been one move behind. Yes. Right, but then you could have moved your fleets from Mid Atlantic Ocean up to North Atlantic Ocean, and the English Channel could have could have uh, contested North Sea, which yeah, I feel like is... North Sea absolutely. The Potential counterpoint, what units are you disbanding this turn? Remember, because you're disbanding like four units. Yeah. Three units. Okay, Holland and Berlin are both off the board. What are you disbanding? Uh, Probably like Piedmont. And Den Denmark came off the board last turn, so actually you don't oh. have to disband anything. Um. And that is, yeah, this is just terrible. I was thinking if Mid-Atlantic Ocean was a unit you were going to disband, there's no need to move it up to North Atlantic Ocean, right? That's fair. You can use, you can have it take its time to advance Spain's position, but even still not worth it, because you're still st st letting Russia into the North Sea is a huge cost that you'd rather not have, and you're actually not even disbanding Mid-Atlantic Ocean, so you've had a huge cost, and you should move Mid-Atlantic Ocean up to the north. Yep. Um, and yeah, after moving Piedmont to Marseille, you just moved Marseille back to Piedmont again as well. I really think you were right. They should have disbanded that unit uh, last turn instead of Leon, um, and yeah, this double convoy just feels so slow. This is the problem with convoys. You give all your moves to this one army, and sure, if it gets the army into the position you want it to be, then yay, that's great, but you're using up so many moves to do it, so many orders, and English Channel in particular, English Channel plus London contesting North Sea was really important here. Um, yeah, I mean, counterpoint... Does Germany have a line? Because I'm pretty sure I've seen France in this position a lot, right? Yeah. With Portugal, Spain, Marseille, Paris, Brest, London, Liverpool, just trying to hold. Because, like, they can just hold at that line forever, right? They can. If Austria doesn't flip against them, I suppose they can. Uh, or doesn't so continue. It... And Yeah, is it that bad? Yeah. Austria's got to go against Russia now, right? Because Russia's going to be at 15 or whatever. 15, they are. That's so insane. So, Austria needs to attack Russia immediately. Yep. So? And you know, jolly good thing that, uh, that Italy didn't take your advice and uh, stay in Ionian Sea here. They have prepared for an attack on Turkey, and that's going to be important, I think. Because one Pretty. turn later, and Army Sevastopol would be in Armenia, and this whole thing would have been blocked off. But, um, like, just... If I literally say, I'll move there from Aegean. You can move into Aegean from Greece, how about? <laughs> but like, no! I don't want to let you into Ionian again! <laughs> yep, this is certainly painful for the Italian. Um, I think you, you're right from a, do, from a negotiating perspective. If they could have gotten away with moving Aegean to Eastern Med and having Greece backfill, they should have done it. But if you mention that in chat, I think Russia just pushes Austria out of Bulgaria, right? And blows up that fleet. Um, yeah, fine. 
<laughs> but yes. Well, they would. They wouldn't have blown up that fleet. That fleet retreats just to, retreats to Greece. Oh yes, you just does. blow up Venice. Yeah, that's true. Um, but in this current situation, Austria is in a nice looking position with control over the Ionian again. Just being able to threaten all these Italian SCs and say, "Do what I want you to do." And you know, if you're going to gain an SC over there, I'm going to take one off you in Tunis and take the bill for myself. <laughs> uh, this is going to be an interesting position. And of course, the Italian can't even threaten to throw to people because everyone knows that the Italian is the person who wants a solo not to happen. Um, yeah, Italy can't throw. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, this is Fighting. an interesting map. Shall we go to the winter? The very last phase? Sure. Uh, well, the very last phase we'll be covering. It's still like 46 years or something off of the actual end of the game, but... Uh, yeah, the last one of us today. Yes. And there we see Army St. Petersburg, Russia, Army Sevastopol. Wave of build? Uh, Russia plus three. Hang plus on. One, two, three, four, Denmark, five, six, seven, Berlin, eight, nine, Holland. ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, they waved a build. Um, that's interesting. Maybe trying to make themselves seem less of a threat than they are. That feels like a mistake. There's no way you're going to What happened is that they forgot that they had it. Army St. Pete or whatever, so they put Army St. Pete twice and should have put Army Moscow. That's possible. That's what happened here. There's no way you're waving the third <laughs> build in this position, right? Like, you're close to just straight soloing. Like, you've got the fleet majority in the north. G Germany only has three fleets. Mid-Atlantic, English Channel... Yorkshire, you've got five. And right? you've He's got, not going to push you out of the north. And you've got all of his build centers, and there's no southern fleets that are anywhere near coming up to a system. This is absolutely true. Um, right? You've got the naval control of the north. If you just execute and punish, and you go into like Norwegian Sea and try to get the North Atlantic Ocean or whatever, the, the exact details are, of course, complicated because there's always nonsensical tactics going on here. But if you can just secure those British centers and mitigate the damage in the south, you're just going to win, right? An extra unit from Wars in Warsaw that gets into Ukraine or into Galicia or wherever is critical here. Absolutely. Like, you just you don't have enough units to hold your line everywhere. That's why you're going to break. And if you have one extra unit, if you get Romania to Black Sea, Sevastopol to Armenia, Galicia to Romania, then Warsaw needs to backfill Galicia. But you can't do that move set anymore. Like Moscow to Ukraine, any any number of things. Honestly, I would have built in Warsaw and Moscow, in my personal approach, and then Romania to Black Sea, Galicia, Galicia to Romania, Warsaw to Galicia, and Moscow to Ukraine, and then just start trying to body on. Right, body onto Austria while you use your fleets to hold onto the German centers is my my instinctual approach here. But like, man, I'm frustrated. Yep, I if this is a diplomatic tactic from Russia, I don't. It's not I think it's ill-advised. Yeah, because Austria is almost certainly going after him regardless. Uh, we he will not find out centers. in this episode. We will not find out whether that's the case or not. Uh, we will have to wait till next week. <laughs> Well, um, the audience is going to have to wait till next week. I mean, we do too, right? <laughs> yeah, we do too. It depends when we record the next one. But yes. It does depend on when we record the next session. <laughs> so, let's do a final power rankings. I have a feeling they're staying exactly Russia's the same. Russia's last place. Russia's last place. <laughs> no. Russia's last. Get out of here, Russia. <laughs> you don't deserve anything. No, Russia's last. Russia goes into last because of their refusal to build a third unit. Yes, I'm this is <laughs> I'm unbelievably keep... tilted. Okay, Russia is staying in first place. I am overriding SEO's decision. <laughs> because... My perfectly rational annoyance. How dare you? <laughs> okay, Russia is on fifteen dots. It's less of a yeah. solo shot than it would have been with three builds, but it is still Russia's, a solo Russia's shot. Russia's on fifteen centers, and the next highest is at nine. Yes. <laughs> Fine. Yep. Um, and this isn't a position you can traditionally stalemate against. There's no uh, perfect stalemate line against this. You have to push back, which is always harder. Um, Sometimes, but it's also potentially easier because it means you can make progress. And 
look at what units aren't on the front lines for the rest of the board, right? Because the rest of the board combined still has 19 units to his 15. So Mid-Atlantic Ocean isn't quite on the front lines yet. Um, I would argue that Piedmont isn't quite on the front lines yet, and Apulia isn't quite on the front lines yet. But Apulia can, of course, be convoyed and get to the front lines very quickly. Yep. Every other unit is, like, actually quite important and and is able to be trading off for a Russian unit, right? And so, as a result, the rest of the map is just favored to make progress against Russia. They just have more, simply. Um, and Russia needed to mitigate that. Yep. And yeah, you said they had 19 units to uh, to Russia's 15. They actually have 19 units to Russia's 14 because of uh, the, the Russian lack of a build here. Um, and every unit is going to count. Uh, will... And yes, so I think the rest of the power rankings stay exactly the same here. Austria definitely hasn't moved above Germany yet, despite the German infringements on home centers. His uh, control over the French peninsula is just hard to, to get him out of. Um, and yeah, Austria... France is defensible, even if it's not France. Um... It's more defensible when they can build in Marseille and Brest. <laughs> but... This is true, and Austria being an Ionian is a big boon, but not enough to uh, to take that award away. Having the Italian behind him is still a problem. Um, a minor problem. Minor problem, but still enough to make it less defensible than the German position. Uh, so, there we have it. At the end of 1960, um, the power rankings are Russia, Gies in first place, Germany, Leif, or Leif, uh, I guess it's Leaf in second, Goldfinger as Austria in third, and uh, it says Mujus, it is in fact the Hangman um, in Italy in fourth on three supply centers uh, with two units cut off from said supply centers. That's a, a painful position to be in, but for one he could very possibly hang on to just because of how desperately he's needed against this uh, Russian threat right now. Um... I think that's all from us. Anything else you want to say, Ezio, or shall we wrap it up there? I hate Russia. Okay, let's wrap it up there. See you next time. <laughs>